Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Yeah, I know. Because I can't get right. This is cutthroat. This prose has words spot from a snub nose. This Kurt meant skur and not give a fuck mode. Because I can't get right. Because I can't get right. Yeah. Can't get right. Okay, hey, this is Can't Get Right with me, Kurt Metzger, and uh, I'm at my mom's house, and I have a big mic in my face, and I'm uh, talking to my buddy from way back in the day when I used to work at Nobody Beats the Wiz. Uh, he was my boss, and then he became a cop in Camden. Is that correct, Ernest Camden? Yeah, that's uh, where I just retired from. He's a retired cop from Camden, so you know he's seen a lot on those dirty, dirty streets. <laughs> and, uh, I just thought I'm doing shows out here at Uncle Vinny's on in Point Pleasant, and then Ernest called me, so I thought I'd have him on. And uh, Ernest Freestone, uh, wait, so how how long you been a cop now? What, uh, like, it was how, about uh, almost 23 years. Geez, that's a long. I I can't believe how fast that went by. That you're already a, already a retired believe. cop by now. I yeah. used to have my whole life ahead of me, and now you're a retired cop. That's how how it goes, I guess. Um, so okay. When, when did you decide the whiz wasn't where you were? <laughs> <laughs> uh, day day two, day two of sales training. Yeah, why? Well, so we were in computers and uh, cell phones department, and um, yeah, home, home office. Oh, that's what it is, home office. And um, uh, remember, I got in trouble at work because who's it? There's this uh, manager there. Oh God, Brian. Yeah, I don't know. Blank his name too, by the way, Mike. You got it. It just, it just occurred to me to blank uh, his name. But so somebody had got it was his birthday or something, and somebody in the main office, he likes to bake this guy. He's kind of like um, you know, like a fattish guy, like a um not like yeah, he was super a little fat. rotund, I would uh I would just yeah, he wasn't like massively fat, but he was like a, a bit of a doughy guy. And uh and so they bought him a basket of baking supplies because he liked to bake and i don't know so what the one guy in the back somebody said what's that for and he goes oh we're gonna bake brian a girlfriend and um i don't know why but i laughed so hard at that that um brian was like you have to stay late today (laughs) (laughs) i could see that i mean it it probably probably was his first uh sexual experience um either that or an apple pie i would assume i mean yeah i wish i could bake and uh, you know, yeah, on the road. In retrospect, but, yeah, maybe he was onto something. Probably be a better girlfriend, to be honest. Um, but so, yeah. wh- how come you became a cop? I didn't even. I remember like hearing that you did that. But um, um, I always wanted to be a cop, and like, it's kind of funny. Like nobody beats the whiz. Like that sales training was the best training I ever had to be a cop. And like, people look at me like side eye when i say that but. so you're saying that beating the whiz helps you beat black people that's what i'm hearing right now <laughs> oh, no. uh, well but, i would say beat uh people but it did make me a, a pretty good uh, as i say the jedi mind trick works pretty well when you sell people what you want them to do well i mean camden is like how did it get did it get any better since <laughs> since i've been there <laughs> well, it depends on who you ask uh yeah. if you ask the politicians oh yeah it got better for them but uh the average citizen no i mean i love the city of camden i love the people of the city yeah. i did not like the. i did not like the corruption in that area it's it's bad yeah, it's got to be crazy I, like it, we we used to do shows like near the well big j my friend as a comic we like we would drive through camden just to look at it on the main strip sometimes because it was what Jay was always like, Hey, you want to go look at the whores? <laughs> There's always like hookers. Oh, that would be Broadway. Yeah. So he yeah. would drive up Broadway and um he he uh we, we would see like he see some kids getting all the school bus and then just like hookers like all up and down the street. And uh I remember one time we were driving up Broadway and uh we see this guy choking a lady, okay, on the like uh near like a uh, row homes as we're going to Broadway. We're like holy Jesus and uh we got a little bit, I'm like, we should just go like check and make sure it's not a, like a murder, you know, like, and, um, and he, we, he were like debating, like, all right, let's go back. So we go back and, um, then they were just sitting on a step and he had his arm around her and they were <laughs> like, they were, oh, they were probably negotiating price. I was probably, I think it was probably a pimp and, and, uh, yeah, well, situation. No doubt. Maybe and, she was uh, skimming off the top. Yeah. And I went there back in the day when weed was illegal, you know, and, uh, 
my girlfriend at the time, she had a friend move down from Maine. My girlfriend back then was a stripper and uh, she had come from Maine and she, she danced at this place in Gloucester Township called Billy's <laughs> Beef and Go-Go, where you could buy meat <laughs> and watch Go-Go. Yeah. And uh, her friend came down. So basically they had all lived together before in like a crack house in Maine. I don't know if you know, Maine had a massive, like longshoremen apparently. Oh yeah, know, they frequent prostitutes a lot because they have no real life. Well, crack. My, well, basically, they get you know you get like I don't know ten ten grand. You come back with like a big chunk of money, and they get like crack yeah. and stuff. And so this girl was trying to get away. She came she came down to Jersey, and she's like, I'm trying to get away from all the heroin. And I remember being like, Well, you don't want to go to Camden then, because that's where there's a lot of heroin. And then like a fly on shit, she went to Camden. And uh, like two days later, after she had just moved, she called my girlfriend to come bail her out of jail and traded her car for to get her bailed out of jail so my girl goes with her friend with her friend's new boyfriend whose name is i don't know what his real name is but he went by israel this is puerto rican guy who was like a former boxer and so my girl went with him to go bail oh go bail her out okay um i think i was like 20 or so and so she goes with this guy who's apparently a crackhead oh and, in camden um, i'm shocked yeah yeah and he uh he was like trying to hit my girlfriend and stuff and like he was like a real scumbag he was smoking crack on the way to the police station so the whole car smelled like uh burnt gi joes uh she bails this girl out uh she comes back with the car tells me this crazy story about being with this guy i was like I, why would you do that but she was always doing dumb stuff like hitchhiking that, that happens a lot in camden we used to call it a gypsy rental where the people that couldn't afford their drugs would give the drug dealer their car and oh. for a few hours and then as soon as oh, they took for a the few car, hours yeah, yeah yeah you know so they can go do their you know drug drops but a couple hours later the person that gave the car freely would come report it stolen so we call those gypsy rentals oh no kid well yeah she didn't well do that. established she gave the car fair and square but the car was destroyed in the space of a week like from when i first met oh, this absolutely. girl and her car was nice. And then when it, when we got it, like the light, basically this guy would smoke crack and like punch the roof <laughs> and like all kinds of crazy things. And uh, anyway, she stayed in touch with this girl because it was her friend and we were trying to get weed. So the amount of times I've been in a bad situation just to get weed, I can't even count. Okay. So we go to her house where she lives with this guy, Israel. And uh, there's another guy that lives there named Shorty. So I walk in this house. There's nothing in it. Okay. There's one TV on the floor. There's a small Dominican guy with just jean shorts on. Like he looked like the Hulk. If the Hulk turned into a tiny Dominican guy, you know, like just with torn jean, he's just sitting watching the TV. And uh, Israel's like, like, all right, I'm going to go, we're going to go to the projects and get weed. And he's like, uh, and he wanted just him and my girl to go. I'm like, no, I'm coming along. He goes, no, it can't be two white people because the cop, it'll be suspicious, which maybe is kind of true because I, I, I know people get pulled over for being <laughs> like, why are you here, white people? There's only one reason. <laughs> and uh, but I insisted on going because I didn't, you know, I mean, I guess I wasn't smart enough to find a better source of finding weed, but I, I was like, not going to go. So we drive out to these projects. I've never seen projects like these. They were the most bombed out, you know, in New York, they're these big buildings, at least like these are like low two, three, four buildings. One of them was just like- This was in, in Camden? You went to yeah. do this? Oh, yeah. then you probably went to Branch Village. Maybe, that sounds familiar. We, we pull in the parking lots. Pitch, by the way, it's not lit. So there's, there's- Oh, that's Branch Village. Yeah, there's this bombed out like middle of the building from what I remember is like, I don't know if it was like collapsed or something, but it was like this big gap in the buildings and you just see it, like there's people in there, but you couldn't make them out. So Israel goes in, you know, he's getting, everybody needed different, he's getting crack heroin for the other girl because she's not a heroin addict and then some uh dime bags remember dime bags <laughs> and she uh and he comes back and gives us our thing i'm looking i'm like oh these are nickel bags so he robbed us a little bit <laughs> for extra crack what do you mean a, a dishonest drug dealer I, um he's not I'm a shocked. drug dealer he's not a drug dealer he's just no. some some uh, dickhead I'm, I'm sure <laughs> if he had paid the correct money they would have given him the correct amount of drugs but as he's walking back to the car out of the darkness 
he just makes a sh- like he just got shot motion to like screw with us. So we go back to their house because her car is parked there. He gives Shorty his uh, heroin, I guess. Shorty goes, the guy hadn't spoken the entire time. The guy just sitting against the wall. He goes, you played me, man. You played me. I guess he shorted Shorty as well. And then uh, Israel starts yelling, like, shut up, Shorty. I know you've been going to my girl's underwear drawer when she's in the shower. <laughs> like, we're like, we're going to get out of here, guys. And we yeah, over that with would the probably be the best bet. Dirtiest seed filled weed that I haven't seen the like of in 30 years now. Skunk I mean, weed. Come on. Who, who hasn't well, I thought skunk. Know? I thought skunk like, smells good. That's why it's called skunk. Like it's got a this is like when you could yeah, still get. I used to call it when they was really sh- shitty weed. That's what I'd call it. Really? Because you got skunk. Um, oh, I thought it was called skunk because it like you. It's pungent is what I thought. Well, whatever. I I I I, uh, I haven't seen swag or mid grade weed in many years. Well, hey, when like, when uh, like New Jersey I, gets up and running with its recreational, it's going to probably be some pretty good stuff. What is new? Yeah, New Jersey's not. Is it legal yet or here? Well, they told like me the, it was. It it uh, well, typical New Jersey fashion. They rushed it, and yes, technically, is it legal? Yes, certified cannabis is legal. AKA, what the state taxes is legal. Here's the problem: there's no dispensaries open for recreational use yet. So that's like the quandary cops can't really ask you if they see it in your car anymore. We're not even really allowed to ask you what what is that? Why is um, it so half ass? Like it's New Jersey. Any, well, it's New Jersey. a lot of states are like that. I mean, California now is like just you know just buy, but even that business is like about to collapse because they run it so poorly. And here's the good news about New Jersey: what they're trying to do is actually, I mean. Legally speaking, I finally did it. Forty-nine years old, I finally tried weed. Woo. Wow, that is—it is. It is. That's, a, that's 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 ext- that is late right? to be beginning a habit it was, like that. It was, and I didn't like it because I hurt my lungs because I don't smoke, or I oh. did it wrong, whatever. But New Jersey, um, the way they're rolling it out is actually pretty cool. They're gonna yeah. one, they want to make sure before they open it up that the products are going to be readily available. So the these uh, recreational based businesses have to prove that they have the quantities that can support both medical and recreational use. Right. They have the ability to stay in business with a viable business plan and that they have the financial backing to also, you know, withstand, you know, the open market. So it's pretty cool what New Jersey wants to do, but you would assume that they would have it ready before they made it a law. Well, I mean, you know what that sounds like? It sounds like they want to have it set up so that, very few people can get into the market and they're only and monopolies. And that's exactly what's happening. Like you That know, doesn't sound cool at all. It sounds like a nightmare. It, it, it will be. And that's <laughs> where that, that whole, you know, too many hands in the pot, you know, that, that's New Jersey 101. Like well, how much can we make yeah. from it so we can then just make that money disappear? Well, I think they, uh, you know, uh, uh, like – a bunch of these people. Remember Evan Boehner, that that uh, senator, Evan Boehner, the guy who cried all the time when Obama was in. He's Republican. Oh. Okay, yeah. So, you know, they were all at no drugs back then. Well, now he's in the weed business, and what's amazing slowly how happened, that happens, huh? Yeah, like it's just like like the whole thing at the time. It was a nonsense thing, but so now, like, this is why California sucks. Is they you have to have generate a huge amount of marijuana to to be profitable. Like the illegal business has shot back up to higher than before and that's the my, legal And that's my biggest fear because let's take Camden, for instance. Camden is not going to have a dispensary. The closest one to Camden is about 30 miles away. Do you mm. honestly think that people oh, in wow. Camden that don't leave Camden to shop for food yeah. are really going to like drive 30, 30 miles away? Or yeah, that's why. I, yeah, right. I, I don't think it's so, – um, I think that there's something else – as far as I can tell, it's like these companies make deals, back, and you know, they make like a deal with the politicians and so that we're going to dominate. I don't know why everybody loves Monopoly so much. They don't seem to be great to me, but. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. It's <laughs> going to make it's going to make inner cities worse, not better. I and mean, the unless you open up a dispensary in these cities that, you know, want the product, you're yeah, just going right. to make your local dealer twice as much money. Because well, why that's are they? they yeah, right. And why are they not? First of all, I don't even understand the distinction between medical and recreate. Like, 
if you have recreational, what do you even need to have a medical thing at all? And I think that's what New Jersey's worried about that. Yeah. People, like the people that need it for medical purposes are going to be the ones that are shorted because well, shorted it, how? Because there's not going to be enough product for both the recreational market and the medical market. Because some people actually only use it as a medical based, you know, entity. But how would there not be enough? If you have like a recreational market, I mean, there's not a shortage of weed in where I live. <laughs> there's a lot I don't of it. Think, I don't think like I think they're creating problems just to delay the inevitable. Like they you know they want it to be open market, but they're not ready. Yeah. Or the politicians haven't figured a way out to control it so they get more of the money. Well, I'm sure there's a bunch of law because you know it was. I don't know why it's not federally legal, other than probably you know, scumbag DEA funding kind of things, but, oh, okay. So when it was illegal, the lobbies that were keeping it illegal the longest, and I don't know if they're still around. Do you know what they were? It was the private prison industry, the, um, the not the PBA, but the police uh, something, some aspect of the police, like uh, the union, the beer makers and uh, the Shopping. prescription drug prescription drug makers. So what I'm guessing is it's like, especially like beer and other others, al alcohol, we're probably worried like, oh, well, they're just going to be able to sell this freely and we have to do jump through all these hoops, you know, like with Uber or something when the taxi cabs, <laughs> whoa, we got to take a break so I can speak to the auto mechanics and also people that amateurishly or auto mechanics, you're probably as good as a pro mechanic. I'm not saying anything less, but what I am saying you should go to rockauto.com, the online store with every auto part at the best prices. Stop dicking around, going to these shops in person and dealing with nonsense, uh, unless you want to. I mean, that's your right. Maybe, maybe you need to get out of the house. Maybe you got to get out of the shop a little bit. And so you can go through that process if you want. But if you don't want, you know, you're someone who loves your family. You could order from rockauto.com. They've been in business for 20 years and they make it easy to find the parts you need at the best possible prices. So if you're a car guy or a lady, right now go to rockauto.com and check out all the parts available for your car. You're going to really enjoy looking at car parts because they have them and there's not some nonsense where the, you know something's not in stock and you got to go run around and this and that. Just get it sent to your house. It's the future. You get it. Rockauto.com. There's no promo code needed because their pricing is already that good. And when you order... Please tell rockauto.com that you heard about them on the Can't Get Right show uh, with me, Kurt Metzger, because uh, they should know that I'm out there. I'm out there for them every day telling people about rockauto.com. Rockauto.com. All right, let's get back to the show. It's kind of like, I was like, it's kind of funny. Like, I look at the alcohol industry and, and like, I'm a huge proponent of like inner cities dictating their own like policies. Cause like, right. To have a blanket policy for a state like New Jersey and then to try to apply it to somewhere like Camden that has – Camden is Camden. It's different. Do you know what they it, call it, the official term for Camden? It's called a sacrifice zone. Have you ever heard that term before? That means I we know it but sucks it makes sense not, to me because yeah. in Camden – there's a tale of two cities in Camden. You have the downtown area, which I call downtown Norcross, because the Norcross family has so much to do with it. Who's that? And it's beautiful. That's That's where Cooper Hospital is. That's where like all the like medical places are. Um, so you have downtown Norcross and then you have kind of like Atlantic City. You have the boardwalk and then Atlantic City. The boardwalk gets all the, the all the patrols and all the nice stuff. And the rest of the Atlantic City and the rest of Camden, besides downtown, kind of is forgotten. And like yeah. it always it kind of pissed me off because like the people of Camden, they're good people. Yeah, but right. some of them are just trapped or don't want to leave their city. They love it. And why yeah, should right. they why should they feel second nature or second best because oh well the politicians are playing downtown and that's right like, you know it's it's kind of ironic that you know, downtown used to get 60 cops during the day and the rest of the city got 30. That makes wow. no sense. You put cops where the crime is, not to kiss politicians' ass. Well, I mean, who's got the money to pay tax, you know, like where the donors are and all that kind of shit is how that works. Camden is, uh, is basically, uh, up, it's poverty stricken. So yeah. it's, it's New Jersey paying the bill. I mean, where right. else in, in America or except the democratically run city 
can you lose four million dollars of a police budget and just go huh, oops they, sorry. they lost it yeah four million dollars they just don't know where it went really huh. yeah it was a huge huge thing in the press oops sorry oh we don't know where it went i mean the, you lose man, four million dollars 20 years ago when i lived in uh cherry hill that was somebody had gotten busted for some corruption thing some mayor or something and so oh, it's just still a series of that like the first day I worked in Camden, because I used to work in New Egypt, and mm -hmm. I kind of tripped over my pride and said, well, you know, I want to be a real cop. Mm -hmm. So I went to Camden. The first day, the flags were at half mass for the that mayor that was caught up in the um, the chic deal that they made the movie about, um, American Hustle. Wait, I, I thought that was in the 70s. It was in the 70s, but he passed away. So they put oh. the flag at half staff. And I'm like, wasn't he a convicted felon? Like, why is that? Yeah, right. That's so what, I kind of. Uh, yeah, wow. Kinda, put it in perspective that Camden is just going to be corrupt until somebody gives enough to, to stop it. No, well, what they did was they labeled it a thing called a sacrifice zone, which means we officially don't give a shit. <laughs> That's what that, that I means. I've never heard that, but I'm glad I, I heard it now. And yeah. I'm working or I've been in a lot of trouble because I know I would have repeated that. Yeah, well, it does so, seem, that seems about right. And I, I guess that's what all these democratically run. And I hate to play politics, but if you look at the five worst cities in America, they have one thing in common. They're yeah, democratically right. run and broken. Um, They're broken on purpose. Yeah. What is I mean, how do you. Uh, so, I mean, if you're a cop there, what is what was like. I can't even imagine like anything done there in Camden. Like, what would you even? Like... Well, let me tell you, quite honestly, because of the amount of cops that are in Camden, I mean, mm -hmm. they have twice as many cops as any city its size. They Camden do. Camden is actually cleaned up quite nice. There are oh. areas that that clean themselves up, the right. residents, uh, and just having a, a police, a real police presence, like right. that French Village is beautiful now. It was oh, all redone. Right? Yeah. So that oh, no got pushed out. But what we're doing is. Be, we're kind of chasing the rats into one another and they're they're starting to butt heads a lot more often because they're running out of territory oh so, you mean so like i don't know what like gangs and stuff like are getting fenced there's into no, a... there's there's a spattering of that type of stuff what what we have in camden are families that are just been in the trade so long and you know that's their their area that's our area and then what happens is they they butt heads and say well you came across that 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 a visible line and you start yeah. getting people shot again boy that's such a natural like thing to happen is create and like everywhere you go that's a city is create that like you know. cities are just there there's just so much aggression in a city and it's unfortunate that that's just the way you have to be is aggressive yeah well new york was like that new york was very uh living flight or fight or flight all day with and now look at it um I haven't been there, I, so I left like uh, three years ago. But when I moved there, yeah, when I first moved there, it was um, like pretty safe overall. And it was because there was like a ton of cops everywhere. Also, there's some with New York where compared to like Philly, they don't know. Uh, yeah, Philly has almost, it's like a 45 minute response time in the case of an active shooter. <laughs> That's what they told my ex-girlfriend. Her parents were professors at a college just outside of Philly. And they were like, yeah, if it's there's a shooter. They told, you know what the school recommended to the professors there? They're like, yeah, if, if that ever happens here, about 45 minute wait. So we recommend you buy a gun. <laughs> they recommend the college professors arm themselves. And nothing for nothing. Philadelphia is really tanked and I, yeah. I equate it to politics. Like, you know. Well, they're, but they're also the people are not like, I'm like a big guy. Like I'm not like tough or something, but I, in New York, somebody wouldn't just pick. First of all, I live in like every no, you're like, you're a tall dude, part. and you're not you're not the average. Like I'm you're not, not the first guy. Yeah, in, you're not going to find yourself in trouble because you're smart enough not to be there. I mean, I'm not that smart, but I I I, okay. well, I maybe, just wouldn't be the first person that somebody would pick. Like the crime when I moved to New York, like Bushwick, and it was like, you know, Bushwick is like. um uh, That's like uh, Queens, right? No, he, uh, no, it's Brooklyn, but it's close to like Long Island City and stuff. But but uh, the people like they would pick their targets. Like you know, it was a lot of like internet job 
people living in lofts in this place I live. So a lot of, of girls. How you carry yourself is what that to protects yourself. Even if you have your head down and your eyes bolting across, the, they they pick up on that. They know you're well, nervous. Yeah, but in in New York, I didn't really. In Philly, there's like nobody thinks ahead like five minutes, so no. it, it doesn't. Nothing like it wouldn't matter. Like it'd be some like, you know, I, I'd be afraid of a twelve year old if they were like <laughs> look like they want to do something because they might have yeah. a gun. Uh, New York didn't seem like, and also New York had a lot of penalties for uh, guns compared to other places. I, like LA, a lot of people have guns. It's like a gun, but yeah, but you know, nothing for nothing. Like I, I, I guess I was like ahead of the curves. So like I came up with the slogan in 2012 because I just seen the writing on the wall. I said, "Policing and politics have to be separated by more than the mere letter differences in the words." And now we have such a politically charged, like. Like Philadelphia and New York are ground zero for the wrong thing. Hug a thug is not how you stop crime. What is it? Like, you know, Hug a thug? What is that? Yeah, that's what I call it. That's what Oh, I, I thought you I thought that was the name of a No, 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 no. That's what I call it. I call it hug a thug. That's where we are. Like well, Yeah, well, they're not, you know what they want to do is not hug them. But uh, the whole thing of, you know, when that I, I was doing jokes about when that like defund the police and all that came out, that's gonna ultimately I, uh, right away when people are saying that, because it's a very stupid thing on the face of it to say, Absolutely. and people that I would talk to, I have my friend, a friend of mine on, uh, this is a comic Kareem. Uh, we are talking, he's from New York and he's like, you know, foster kid. I know him from doing like the chilling circuit. So he's been around a lot. He was like, he goes, well, maybe, you know, demilitarize the police or, or like reform the police. He was saying that. And I was it like, it is coming. It is coming. And like, whatever well, is wrong with camden the yeah. one thing i do really respect is that they were kind of ahead of the curve with de-escalation like yeah it, it, that's huge now in policing huge. well explain that explain what that is how that works um, that's the principle of not needing to have that authoritative stance taking your time time is that time is a great uh de-escalator by itself just giving people that extra second to calm down before you yeah, lay right. on them um, that's why I called it the Jedi mind trick, but I was very good at it. And it came back to that stupid sales training bullshit we got at the Wiz, but it worked. No, it probably does. Yeah. Well, take uh, a little time. Yeah. They all, remember feel, felt, found? No. Oh, uh, yes, it's I do Overcoming now. objections. <laughs> yeah, right. That's, that's, I used that do you know, literally my whole career as a cop, and it just pays dividends. You just got to take, yeah, we, I you remember the take book. some time. The, do you remember the book? The so the sales book that first day it said when a customer yeah, says so no, more. yeah, when a customer says no, what they mean they is tell me more. I need to know more. <laughs> <laughs> Which I mean that cannot it sounds like very sinister if applied in like a you know a sexual situation <laughs> when yeah. a woman says no, she's like, I need to know more. Yes, but, yes. Yeah, Which but I know I know what you mean. No, um, let me tell you, honestly, I, I was, I'm a big proponent of de-escalation, and I'm glad that other departments, and it's almost like a nationwide thing, but like do, a do lot think, of things, Camden oh, were, they were ahead of it. Like that's, they preach de-escalation every day, and do it, you it's think, a wonderful uh, tool. Um, yeah, so, because that seems like you would, you would think that would be a thing like that they had been doing, but do you think... Um, I, you might have been the one that told me this. I, I another a friend of mine that was a, or it might be my other friend that was a cop. You know what? It was this other podcast I did, and the guy used to be a cop. I think he was like even DEA or some kind of drug. He worked in something with drugs. It might not have been exactly DEA, but he um he quit, and he was saying like everything was based on arrest numbers and nothing else. So there's a natural like if you got to put numbers up, you know, on the board, that's going to lead. Like it's not any kind of quality; it's just quantity. So that's why someone like uh, Kamala Harris, when she had her whole, you know, as the DA and all the like people she kept in prison that she should have let out, like ordered to, she didn't want to disrupt the prison, like you know that awful kind of shit, like that. Like the way they measure it is so like it almost reminds me of not not so much the whiz, but um, Funko Land. I used to work at the same plaza. Oh my god, it, dude! I did. I went there just before I got out of sales, buddy. Yeah, I we. I, yeah, I was in. A, I was the assistant manager there, and and um, I had my own store in Jersey City Mall. Well, I I managed that store too. That's the one I managed before I went to the Wiz. Get the fuck out, small. In Hudson Mall, yeah. Yeah. That's, so that's funny. 
you have to sell those cleaners. Big, big black guy called Akeem. Uh, Aaron was my assistant. There's a guy named Aaron that was my assistant manager. Big guy. Who, yeah, he was Seen big. High, kind of high, high pitch voice. Oh my God, he worked for me. Oh wow, that's wild, dude. Yeah, I used yeah. to hang out with him now all the time. Now I'm scared. Now I'm very. He scared. was friends. Yeah, I met him through uh, Frank Galarza, the manager at Funk Cohen. He was a Jehovah Witness guy in the Spanish congregation. That was his friend from Jersey City. So then I would hang out with Aaron. I thought his name was Akeem, but yeah, I guess Aaron. I thought his brother was Akeem. I mean, maybe his name was Akeem, really, but big big kid, really doofy looking, kind of like playing. No, Aaron had like glasses. He was kind of like heavy, but he's big. He's a big dude. He used to play football. Well, this this kid definitely never played football, but he was a a different guy. Big kid. When I got to that store, I had to clean it clean it up and all that when i i mean it was crazy what happened going on but anyway I you sell those cleaners remember did you sell yeah. cleaners so they would yeah. go we'd have these stupid sales meetings i don't know if your district manager was if it was kathy the same as me no it was a, it was some guy oh she must have got fired by that so <laughs> we got <laughs> uh we would have the, you know you have to add 15 percent. that was your number of sales and so some people were good at it you know and some people uh weren't so I would always try to be like, all right, you guys do this stuff. And then, you know, because I could sell them pretty well, but they were so they would push these stupid cleaners. And they'd be like, that's how we know you're giving great customer service is that you sell these game cleaners with it. And what is this at a markup? They're like two bucks and they sell them for $15. I think they gave us like a $2 commission, which is kind of a good cut of that. But you mean a so, spit? Remember those? In you know, between kind, the kind of. Oh, In yeah. Between kind the sevens. Of. <laughs> but it, it created a lot of like theft and all kinds of like fake things to, to make the numbers good. Like all the stuff on the wire of like juking the numbers that the yeah. people on top who don't understand anything are like, we just need to see these numbers. And they have all these nonsense reasons. They tell you why you got to hit them. But yeah, that's that like happens. everywhere. It that's does. Everywhere. It happens in police work too, because what, what they want to see is an improvement, especially when you're basically an orphan like Camden police is that they're getting federal money they're getting state money because the city can't pay for it you have to see an improvement so the ucr the unified crime report yeah that's where these crime numbers come from but they're self-reporting so wait a minute so we had a good month this year well you report what like they're all self-reported yes wow there's no oversight so what's that tell you about those numbers is that common is it common? I don't know. I never had, I was never in charge of the UCRs, but I always thought it was funny that it's self-reporting. Like nobody, there's no checks or balances for yeah, that. Yeah, who else would be reporting it, I guess? Who, if it's not the, like, and by self-reporting, you mean what, like the cops themselves on the street level? The police, or No, the police department themselves submits to the, the feds every, I, I don't know if it's quarterly or monthly. The, That's what, gotta be everywhere. Sure it is. Wow, that's Especially something. Smaller I didn't even towns think of that. that want, you know, smaller towns that want to show, you know, hey, look how great we are. We have low crime, you know. Oh, not wow. saying anything. Not I'm not saying anything is like you know disproportionately you know corrupt, but it's self-reporting. Are you really going to be honest? Um, yeah, not if it, I mean, no, they're not going. to. I mean, who's going to like? Remember Cuomo with the they self-reported the old people he killed. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they're like, and they're like we had to not do we we had to because it was like i think it was gonna like help trump to it turned out cuomo was a murderer <laughs> like well he kind of hung himself so if he didn't get there he was gonna get in trouble anyhow yeah he squeezed the lady's face too hard at a party that's what took him down eventually <laughs> <laughs> well it's like in police work it's not what you do it's what you it's how it's when you make a mistake if you lie that's yeah. when cops get jammed up. Like, listen, we're human, and I really wish people would understand that when a cop does something stupid. Well, you know it's, what it is? We're human. We make mistakes. They like it's it's well, okay. That's the thing is once you're in the capacity well, before you were saying about the authority thing of, of, of leaning on that, because what happens, you know, I remember people like in, especially in philly there's some like anti-police brutality march and like why is it when a cop gets killed it's more important than like if you get killed and it's not that like objectively it's more important but probably it's because they are not just the person they're the arm of the state so 
you're like killing, you know, figuratively, it's like killing society as well as the person. Yeah. So there's an added layer of, of like this, the state's like power there that is, that's a whole thing. So I get that part of it. Um, but I like, uh, 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 I don't understand. Um, I don't know. I don't understand why it's not how you said it, like the escalation and stuff, because they, they have a uh, member in Goodfellas when he's getting arrested, Henry Hill and the end and the cops are like, oh, open the fucking door, put your fucking hands on the thing. And he knows it's not a mobster. Yeah. There's no call for that. And I'm not, I'm not naive enough to believe that there aren't wrong people in the profession. There was are. that was that a thing that, that, toxic, they that, that toxic way of talking to people is so self it's not it, it, it wasn't a way that they trained people like i, no, I thought absolutely. not even when i first started that they, they tell you yeah you know you, you can treat people like shit i mean that's never been no i don't mean that i mean like i thought maybe there was some technique to that thing of like someone shouting i always thought that was like a dumb way to do it because people in in, in like you know, if I'm like, I'll like fumble and I don't know, maybe reach for something like my glove compartment when I shouldn't, if I was right. being yelled and, at. Exactly. And that's that split second decision that cops have to make. Like I always equate it to like when people jump on a cop for doing what they think is wrong. But that had a split second to make that decision to go home or die. And that's the way we right. think. But well, like when a doctor kills somebody on the operating table. That's yeah. not a split second. Usually he has plenty of time to, you know, say, oh, okay, what I'm, what I'm about to do is this, 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 and this. Right. But you never hear about a doctor that messed up on the operating table going to prison. No, Same yeah. thing. Same thing. Well, uh, uh, here's what I like. If you somebody get, here's what I really get. If you get snagged by the legal system, you know that who my uh, when I did construction down there in uh, Cherry Hill, my boss always used to say to serve and collect. So because things are based around like, you know, the state like shaking you down for things, you know, like, uh, and people can't afford stuff or they can't afford to like, you know, there's there's a first of all there's already an element of nerves because Lord knows how it's going to end up for you, especially if you're like riding dirty or some as they say. So you've already got a tense thing where somebody's like, all right. What are my options here? Like that, that to me, that's like a ma massive danger. If you got somebody who maybe did time and they've got something that's going to send them back. And like, so now you're right in yeah. the, I mean, every in car stop in Camden, you, you, you're always in the back of your head. Okay. What is in that car? Well, it's Camden. So there's a very good chance. There's going to be at least one gun there. If it's not the one I'm wearing, there's probably yeah, one. Right. There. So you, you always, you approach things differently depending on, you know, where you are, but in today's day and age, that gun could be in a car in the suburbs just as well as in a city. Yeah. Well, people I think all the, all the, um, you know, like, I understand people get mad at, and depending on what, the other thing is, depends where you are, like location with how cops are that's, traditionally that's, that I found. That's absolutely true. I mean, there's so, small towns on the Jersey shore that even as an ex cop, I, I don't like dealing with them because they just have that, that smugness about them. Right. Well, they're shaking. I mean, you know, not Point Pleasant, but uh, where was I? Another oh, shore. But, I think you know, probably towards like Seaside, maybe. Yeah, like, and I was driving, like, I had a cop just following me. And I, I was like, I, I didn't want to drive just with like, a cop. I'm like, I, what is happening here? So I pulled into a um, parking lot and he was like, he was following me to try to like get something because it's all like shakedown for, uh, you know. Just remember something. Like when you say a shake, you know how much a town makes on that like traffic summons they get? What? No matter what you pay in a fine, a town yeah. gets about $7. Where's Resco? You tell me. To the state. And then where does it go from there? Oh. Yeah, well, they pile stuff on. $7. Like $7. Yeah, and it all goes to different funds and different things at the state level. Yeah, right. So they towns figure out. The towns don't make money on those those summons. Well, I, well, not the towns, but somebody is like, like okay, somebody, in San Diego. Somebody had, is. Yeah, in San Diego, I had a, I did a old joke about it. I got a jaywalking ticket for $200. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and it was like. It was me and my friend from high school who happened to be work. She happened to be working in San Diego, and I was doing Comic Con because I used his cartoon voice. So we, we had some drinks and we're walking, and uh, there's all these people just laid out on the sidewalk like heroin addicts. San Diego's a massive like heroin town. Well, yeah, I mean, most of California cities are not very good right now. 
Yeah, right. And so so we're walking and um she got a ticket and I did. Now she like disputed it and did all this stuff and they like sent her an apology They're like you shouldn't even got this ticket i was like fuck this i don't live here and like eventually they take it out of your bank account you you absolutely have to pay that ticket <laughs> like they will <laughs> i was joking like, you got a better chance of seeing jesus blow buddha than me pay this but they will get the money you you have to pay it but if i had done that if i'd sent it in i'm just not good at that stuff so like you know <laughs> paperwork so uh but that was like that's clearly somebody had numbers they had to hit to me for somebody to be like, it would almost like the cops, like I haven't given this ticket out all day and my numbers aren't going to be, I mean, why else would you bother someone with that? I, unless you're Honestly, I, I, I can honestly say I've never worked anywhere that had a quote unquote quota. And in New right. Jersey, any quota is actually against the law. I knew, I heard that about New Jersey before. That is true. Actually, I was asking some about it, but I think that's now, not everywhere. Work around, of course, because police departments always find a nice, great way of hammering, you know, their cops. Is it could be a work expectancy, but it's not a quota. See, there's there's what is a work, work expectancy. Yeah. yeah. So they just changed so, the name of it. Exactly. It's not a quota. Oh, that's We're not wow. telling you you have to do it. But here's a work. Here's a work. You know, expectation. Yeah. Uh, you know, you need to stop a car, at least one car a night. Well, okay, well, what happens if, you know, God forbid, oh, I don't know. I don't actually see anything. Yeah, right. Well, and in Philadelphia, I mean, if that's the case, Philadelphia just took away the average car stop. They don't, because of the DA there is a complete freaking tool, he took away car stops. So, if, you know, that, that cop that wants to stop the car because he knows the guy in it just shot somebody. It yeah. doesn't have the justification. Oh, there's a taillight. Well, I can't stop that car. Yeah, right. It's something like uh they yeah, well, I think it's like besides like the incompetence and the, you know, I, I to me like the cops is like the lowest level thing to be mad at of like customer service. Like if I, if I call Verizon and I'm talking to someone in the Philippines and like maybe they could shoot me almost compare. So they're there to take you know, I don't yell at people on those things cuz like that's what the company hired them for to take the abuse of the angry customers. And so like that is everything set up like that everywhere. It's like the, at the high levels, there's not going to be any changes. And then, no, never is. Never and then, is. so when you see like, uh, you know, when all those marches, at least politicians are like, yeah, we got to defund the police. I'm like, like, that's not the focal well, point is to what I said about politics. We now have politics and policing. And even like as a grade school, you will learn that there's more than one section of government. And the reason why is you can't have the people that make the laws turn around and enforce the laws you right. have to have that separation but now we don't we have we have the same the same people telling us okay this is the law and this is how you're going to yeah right enforce the law and it's not working obviously yeah so the order people giving orders that i thought it was real convenient that they would be you know uh yeah these police are out of control it just looked like a you know kind of abdication of like who's responsible but also because I'm sure everything's set up for funding. This is why there would be an incentive to lie about numbers. You got to keep, I, I, in DC, when I worked there, I talked to these like, they're like young, you know, in their twenties, like kids that are like way jaded that work for political things. And they explain how it works. You got to always get your next round of funding. And you Correct. Spend because money. if you don't use it, you lose yeah. it. So if yeah. I didn't, if I didn't use this $5 million next year, I lose $5 million which makes no sense to me. If you can actually do without that $5 million, good. Right. Yeah, but no, the there's no... Uh, it's not like we're ever going to see that $5 million again because it just goes away, it just flies away. I know that's amazing, like the amount of like... Like that's the LA, the, the, where, I, where I live. Um, it, I live in West Hollywood. So it's not... My block's like not so bad. It's not like... It's like suburban kind of scuzzy compared to like if you lived in oh, like yeah, a... There's definitely like a difference, city. sure. Um, but if you go to downtown, it looks like Calcutta. It's I've never seen anything like it. I mean, I lived in New York for almost 20 years. I never saw any homeless yeah, thing. I'm not there. I just, you know, I hate to use the media, but I mean, you, you take the media for what it is. If they're showing you a picture of something and you can kind of use your own inference skills and see like well, the last time a train was robbed was in the 1800s. And now that's happening. Well, they've had the that a while. They, yeah, they've had that quite a while, it turns out. I found out. I thought that too. I, that's why I was joking. I'm just, like, what is it this? It just boggles my mind that that's a Pinkerton's. issue in 2022. 
is, yeah. is people hijacking trains. No, there's an organized, there's some organized group that's doing it there. Um, but they just get away. It's just that it's so that guy, Gavin Newsom, he was the guy when I used to play San Francisco and his big idea was to just corral the homeless to like this one section. And um, it was getting like bad. This is a long time ago too. It was getting bad. It was like, yeah, this guy is an idiot. <laughs> he's, he's the governor. The guy's got great hair. I mean, the main thing is to have great oh, hair. I'm a little jealous of the hair. I mean, sorry. I know you're politically challenged, but yeah, no, I, I consider, um, you know, when I say tax the rich, I mean people with more hair than me specifically. Like million hairs, I call Still there. Them. Still there. Yeah. I don't know how. But... Yeah, you should be taxed extra for the hair. Um, but if Gavin Newsom had hair like Boris Johnson, those lockdown things would all be over immediately. <laughs> like, you know, in England, they had to drop all that because Boris Johnson don't have hair like Gavin Newsom. No, Gavin Newsom no. went to fans. All Boris Johnson did was have a wine and cheese cracker party <laughs> outside. Gavin Newsom's going to like indoor fancy restaurants with like, the, you see the photos of him with his no mask eating with the people that, well, that happened here in Jersey too. Our illustrious uh, pansy of a governor got caught two or Who's three that? times going lockdowns. Murphy. Who's the governor? Oh, Murphy. I don't know who the governor is. Yeah, I, all listen, of them. The only thing he did for me is sign the retirement plan so I could get out of Camden. So he's still a great governor, except he's an absolute coward. Um. Yeah, well, then that's the other thing is the stuff's all set up to make you that way. Like, so that, you know, you got at the low levels, they got to show certain numbers and the governor's got to say, we did this, this and that, yep. you know, that's that. I read an article about uh, like defending Kamala Harris when all that stuff came out about what she did as DA. Okay. You can't defend her. She's defensive. Well, here's how they do it. No, here's how they do it. Um, they go, well, that that's just how, um, you know, as a black woman, trying to make it like she did what she had to do because that's the stuff you have to do when you're in charge that kind of which by the way is true that's the kind of shitty stuff people have to do when they're in charge because how bad it is and then it's an extra layer of like and she's a woman of color so it was like extra hard for her but you see the focus is it's all that i'm with her shit where you're it's not about them doing anything for you it's about you hoping for the the wagons it's always been circle the wagons it's us versus you but you're supposed to we project elect you, and yet then you turn on us. It's it's a vicious circle. You're supposed to project your, you know, that's all the identity thing is. You're supposed to go like, oh, I'm a woman of color, and she is. So if she's doing well, that means I'm doing well. Of you course, know? yes. So the that's Obama. Like, that's the Obama principle. Every, everybody, everybody's that's Reagan to that's everybody I've seen. It, and it, it's and it, I don't know when it started, probably before I was born, but for me like, too as well. The, yeah, the idea that you're supposed to um, get fixated on a personality, it doesn't matter what they do. It's just like where they symbolize. It's probably older than, <laughs> it's probably been around a long time. And so everything slowly becomes more aesthetics and not any kind of, uh, and so like my, yeah. So like, you know, I do, uh, I've been writing for a, this Jimmy Dore show I do on uh, YouTube with Jimmy. And um, he's like, the only, like, you know, I really hated all lefties after my friend Barry died just because of the comedy aspect of the bullshit I've been through. I, and, dude, um, I, I don't know how you walk the the fine line of the minefield that comedy is today. It's, it's not in, it's only a minefield. I've never been in trouble for any jokes I've ever done ever. What I got in trouble for was like, that's why I was saying people like, Oh, it's killing comedy. Like, no, like it's literally comedy is the only way you're allowed to really communicate. Now what it's killing is way worse than that, which is, <laughs> Uh, just speaking freely what you think. So I got in trouble for saying something I thought, which by the way, I was fucking right about. I can't say enough. That's what I was in trouble for. Nothing. W- and, but it's then you get like sanctions or whatever on you, you know, this, this thing came together with like tech and social media where you don't ever punch out. You're always on the clock and, and whatever you're doing. Yes. That affects your work. They want everything tied into one thing. Well, that's like people are on board. For the rest of my life, God forbid I did anything illegal. I'm going to get hammered because once a cop, always a cop. Be like, you don't oh. get to turn it off. You hang up your badge and gun. But if I go on trial, it's oh well, you're a former cop. Oh yeah, right. They, yeah, so, you should know the law. Sucks, but you should know how to evade the law better. Is really what that means. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, guess, do we even yeah. train people here? <laughs> yeah. Shame on you for following the rules. Did, was there any, um, did you see any kind of wild 
shit in uh, uh, with as far as with the police force or I mean, I'm sure on the streets of Camden, you had to see something crazy. But um, overall, how was the police force there? Like, like, how did it run? Except for a chain of command that doesn't really give a shit about their cops. Mm. They don't. They do. They treated us very poorly. I mean, in, I was there almost nine years. They lost 600 cops. Wow. 600 cops left that department. And it was for one reason. They just don't care about you. They care about them and what it looks like to the politicians yeah, and right. the, everybody else. So like you had no quality of life while you were there. Right. That aside, their their concept of like getting into the community and then branching out. Mm-hmm. I love that. And it's not like smoke and mirrors. They actually really do preach that. Like yeah. my last job was basically I was public relations i would go out every day for 12 hours and shake hands and kiss babies it was wonderful like that's my personality it was perfect right. for me and it was really enjoyable because like the more the people trusted the cops the more willing they were to help us when hey that shooting that just happened on the corner that 90 percent of the time they didn't see anything and two days later they'd be tugging you into a store going hey i saw this 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 and this so you know, the dividends of this this community out it works uh, you know I, I wanted to get into that but um i kept shaking babies and kissing hands i would screw it up and uh yeah that would yeah, yeah. I, I i i usually <laughs> said that too kissing mom shaking babies but. Yeah. <laughs> uh who like yeah i don't think i don't know also any solution or anything because i don't know who who's going to get elected that I, I can't imagine something would be fixed by like just electing the right person the the only way we're going to fix these cities is to to break the cycle of letting it stay broken like i mean before i went to work in camden and before i went to work in camden i really didn't understand this whole well these democratic cities are broken working there for nine years i understand what they're saying they're broken on purpose because a broken city gets a blank check yeah, right. If you start to correct the problems, oh, well, that federal money is going to start drying up because, hey, you don't have that crime issue anymore. We can like scale back what we're giving you. Yeah, did you right. Ever, you ever see a politician that wasn't willing to steal? I mean, I didn't, did I say steal? I mean, take free money? Um, I mean, you could say steal. I don't think something will. I don't think there'll be any. Oh. I'm like gas digital. It's not. But that's probably one of the least offensive things ever ever said on this podcast channel. <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, yeah, like I, I, I can't see a fix. The fix is you, you go back to, I, I hate to say the Raymond, the, the Reagan three strike extent, you're out rules. You start enforcing the laws you have. Then you don't necessarily need more of them, but you need to enforce them. Well, you what if you- they didn't? Um, okay, so because the three strikes, the problem was it would be like somebody would go back in for like something minor, right? Or if you had three felonies. So that's where you get all that like, you know, minor drug offense shit. That's a felony. Right. And I'm not talking that I'm talking these hardcore, like violent crime that literally you arrest them. And five hours later, they're out. I'm not even yeah. done with the paperwork and they're out. And how much? Think gonna, it, it's how, how, ridiculous. Yeah, they go, we'll probably go kill a witness, my guess, but how, how you know, there, I always hear arguments about that. You know, people say like, well, it's not a bunch of nonviolent drug crimes in prison. It's a lot of like, violent. like what you saw, what would you say, like the numbers of people that were going into the system? Was it mostly violent crimes or was it all kinds of in stuff? Camden, or... Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. You had the same people. And the ironic thing is you would go to a shooting and they would be the third time this guy was shot. Hard wow. to call him a victim. Hard to call somebody a victim when they're shot three times on the same corner doing the same shit so wow what like but, what do you mean like a rival shoot too because you're on the wrong corner is just that like that there you go yeah i mean camden is a very small city that's why i was like the first year i was there it was america's deadliest city it slowly climbed i remember that down. it's yeah, not it the deadliest way down. way down that's and it's not necessarily we had we went from about 40 shootings a year mm to maybe now they're about 25 to 30. So it didn't drastically go down. The problem is other bigger cities blew up with their crime. So we're now kind of, (laughs) we're kind of forgotten thanks to Philadelphia going up and New York going up. Yeah, But I mean, 
the amount of money they've spent on the crime in Camden is ridiculous. And yeah. it really has only seen a minuscule amount. They've bulldozed away more crime than we've chased it away. Uh, yeah, right. I, I mean, wow. The, it really you knock is. Down, uh, you know, when you knock down you know, like these affordable housing places and you don't replace them, the people have to move somewhere. And there's only oh, so and many they don't, And they don't replace them. No, very slow. And a lot of that stuff too is like that, you know, I don't know if you saw when the, the I don't know why there's that this quest to like smear Chappelle all the time, but uh, they were like, Chappelle gets in the way of affordable housing. There was this whole news thing of he was, he was trying to, and then, you know, as it turns out, what affordable housing means, like some developer makes like luxury housing and then they set aside a minor amount of land I'm for so glad affordable. you said that. You know, it's yeah. ironic that you said that. And I didn't prompt you to say that, but getting back to the whole downtown Norcross thing. They knocked down a baseball stadium when they chased away the one team that was there. Overnight, they decided, well, you know what? Norcross wants this field, so let's get rid of the baseball team. And what they, they jacked up. What's that? For what? What they want it for? For the, for the property. So, like, Do they and, put something there, or is it? Oh, let me, let me get you. Well, it was announced that there was going to be affordable housing built in that area. Yeah. But also, before that, there's two brand new office buildings a hotel right and yeah, guess cool. what's yeah. not even guess what's not built yet yeah right that's what they were going to do in the Chappelle yeah. in, uh, where he lives exactly the that, affordable housing part which you would think in a city right. that needed it that would be your first priority yeah no they they uh silly, silly me they just need it on paper it, it with all those words those buzzwords and i didn't even know that that affordable housing meant nothing <laughs> like, I, I wasn't aware of that until the this story but that's a very common thing. In fact, every word you hear, you know, like sustainable or like affordable, or you can almost bet we're like free trade, uh, fair, fair uh, labor. What is it? Fair Anything trade. Anything that has more than one adjective is probably not a good thing. Yeah. Did you ever see the, you know, like, I didn't know this, but like slaves, I guess, pick all the chocolate, all the chocolate almost. We have like a candy cartel here. They get child slaves in the Ivory Coast to pick the cocoa. It's not pretty. Uh, no, it's not. So, and you're, I don't know, slave or indentured servant would. No, they're child child slaves. They they pay them like oompa loompas. They get the little beans to eat. I swear to God, that's what it is. So I, back I, in the nineties, just... back in the nineties, there was two bipartisans. Two senators were like trying to put a stop to it, and then all the companies got together, like Nestle and well, all of them, and they were like well, don't make any laws. And then they made a statement that they're committed to blah, 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 labor and child. And so then you started seeing fa uh, fair trade stuff on like coffee and chocolate on the label. And those with the label probably are definitely slave slave chocolate. <laughs> they just made a statement and did nothing. A reporter who was reporting on well, Ivory Coast got killed. That just gets back to us, especially us as American. We just love a nice story. We yeah, just love a good story. Yeah, it's not even like we that. look into it. All you have to do is tell us a lie and we'll agree upon it. Well, they'll tell you now not to even do... This is the first time I can remember where it was like, you know, things like don't do your own research. I've like never heard something like that and, said before. Isn't in my that life. from like 1984? Isn't that like George Orwell shit? Yeah, they didn't say don't do your own research, but the thing that's like Orwell no, is they the, want one of us one yeah, of us yeah it, it, the george or the orwell thing is though like making the word like getting less and less words and then having just the words mean bad or good and not mean anything else the the the, the thing where they like don't do your that that's the craziest thing to me because that's like um i read it in forbes on forbes it was like you must never do your own research is the title of it and i'm like who who are they like, is this to people who read Forbes? Because they're not like somebody like, I guess, who's that dumb that should not even try are not, they're not going to go through Forbes. Forbes articles. It's not their number one list. Yeah. They, they're that's probably directed, like, guy. Yeah. That's directed at like the reader of Forbes to not do. So they're not targeting. Someone educated. Yes. Obviously, they're telling, that's to tell educated. So, yep. Yeah. To tell them not to look into this. So especially on Jimmy's show, we do all these stories because when the pandemic started, uh, Jimmy got a uh, long COVID from his Moderna shot, his second oh, one. Oh no, that doesn't happen, sir. You're you're mistaken. That well, doesn't happen. So, because he got all this flag for it, but so he didn't know about any of the stuff that all happened to him. And then uh, <laughs> the 
they, they put him in a study, you know, because the stuff was all rushed. They put him in a study, and guess guess what they gave him to treat it? Uh, uh, ivermectin. That's what they gave him. No, no, sir. You must be lying. You must I be swear lying. to God. And uh, yeah, big so, farm coming for you. Yeah. So now, like, so like uh, my sister and brother in law, for example, depending on where you live. And also, I've watched, like, I was at a show. I hadn't seen Aziz in a long time, you know? I, I knew him from, like, when he started in uh, New York. And um, he had this whole bit he was doing about Aaron Rodgers. Oh, no. And he's like, he, this, I've seen this 100 times with different people on stage. And, and he goes, he's like, he says something about, like, you know, he, he made his choice. He goes, he's a football player. You think he probably did his own research? <laughs> he's gonna make the right choice and i remember thinking like okay first of all you think a professional athlete is gonna one not know better than you what goes in their body their money maker like yeah, yeah. a pro football player knows 20 things you never even fucking heard of about how to treat anything because that's their job especially when you're so, at that yeah, level that's their million dollar paycheck <clears throat> yeah so that is there's a whole bunch of people that are like i mean not a bunch it's a minority of people but I remember being in New York in that, and it's like a certain yeah. class. Uh, I'm vaccinated, that, not by choice. I mean, they basically they didn't force us in, in the police department, but it was strongly suggested. And what'd you get? So what kind? I did a mix and match. I did the. Oh, uh, I, I never heard that. Good. Dangerous. I did the first two rounds were Pfizer, and then okay. I just got because I'm now working in a hospital. Uh, I got a Moderna booster. So I'm not, I don't care what I, I'm not. How long, how long ago did you get it? The booster? Uh, it's about two weeks ago now. Well, what, wait for week three. I ain't touching a booster. Cause uh, you see Heather McDonald. Do you know who Heather McDonald? Hey Mike, we, can you find Heather McDonald collapsing video? I can send it to you if you don't have it. No, no, I know the video you talk, but I'll find it. Dude, this is crazy. So, you know, Bob Saget died, right? Yeah. It wasn't that some type of like, I, I'm, as a his cop, head, I'm very interested about that. Yeah, so he he fell and hit his head, and they said it was like a baseball bat hit his head. The, the force, what but but what I think it is is um, because he's he's tall. If I fall and hit my head, it's going to be like a baseball bat hit my head. That's the like just me but falling. Usually, hit. medically speaking, if you pass out, you usually fall forward. So Kyle, who I make sketches with. He has been, he was taking some medication and he fell in his bathroom first backwards. He said, he got up and tried to walk and fell forwards. Bob Sag had the same thing where he was hitting the front and back. So he probably tried to get up and fell again. But yeah. the interesting thing is when that came out, it's in the, like, they started hiding parts of the autopsy, but it was initially it was reported he had an enlarged heart and he was COVID positive. Huh. Gee, I um, wonder how that happened. So Heather McDonald, Whenever Mike puts it up and we play it. Okay, watch this, dude. I don't care, but I want you to know, double vaxxed, booster, flu shot, and I'm going to be honest, I have the shingle shot too. And I still get my period. What? Yes. Traveled, went to Mexico twice. Did shows, meet and greets, never got COVID. Clearly, Jesus loves me the most. Seriously. So nice. So nice. What the fuck? So you hear them laughing because they think it's like a perfectly crafted bit. She fractured her skull. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you got it. It's like upsetting. Like, so they thought it was a joke because it was set up like perfectly. The, the, dude, get the, uh, we put German anchor faints also. Where do you see this shit? There's a bunch that, of these all over the, all over the place. I didn't know about that. That <laughs> doesn't that, now, doesn't that like seem that. like too, I mean, it's almost like, is this like fake? It's like too on the nose even. Oh, hold on. Joy's calling me. Hold on. Yeah, fine. Um, put German TV anchor collapses. I mean, if it was safe, they would have gone away with the emergency use. That's the way I look at it. Because all that emergency use is protects the drug companies. God forbid they do find out. Oh, yeah, guess what? 
real sorry we gave you the uh, zombie uh, disease. Well, you he, can't sue. That's all for, that emergency that's, is here's what it protects is. them, not us. It's, a, it's the same, right? It's the same as like, um, because most people, most people are safe. But the thing is, there's always people that are not going to be. They're not the majority, right. obviously. Like, if, I don't want, I don't know when this goes on you, YouTube, what's going to happen. But um, the thing is, they exist. It's not a, it's not made Absolutely. up. Absolutely. I mean, so they don't care. This is how everything. This is like the whole society works. Is like human sacrifice that has never gone away. We're going to have that forever. And everybody goes, okay, we got to throw some people in the volcano to so God keeps our country. That's how it's always been done. And that's what we do. So previously in America, they would be like, okay, you know, you have all the immigrants coming over and fighting. I mean, that's how why the, why you think he invented the term black and white? Because Irish weren't white and, and the Italians weren't. And then finally they're like, okay, you guys can be white at least. So that way we can indicate at least you're not black people. And then, then we have, uh, it's not, sometimes it'll be targeting, but it's a thing of, well, I don't care. Like who's the people I don't have to care about so that I don't have to think about it. And you got to make the grass, you know, blood makes the grass grow, et cetera. So now the people that are like elite, they're so, they're so far ahead of everyone else. And they don't even have racial, like, it's not even a thing of being racist. It's they're so depraved is that it's such depraved indifference. They're like, all yeah. right, well, the peasants well, need someone to hate. So they'll just shell game it. We're we're now entrusting our health and well being to a pro. He's a Bill Gates is yeah he might be a genius, but let's be honest he's a computer programmer. We teach coding to kids in high school, so right. congratulations. Uh, the world savior uh, is a computer programmer. Well, you know where he came from. PhD. Do you know where he came from? Uh, a, a college like dropout. That's what I. So the only story I heard of. Was yeah, he dropped out of college. Um, he was like a nerd, and Steve Jobs was like the cooler guy. And then they yeah. had a battle, and I don't know that you know, that's the story. That's not he's old money from Seattle. His grandfather was yeah, a fixer. We're giving like we're giving people that have no right to say anything about medicine. Well, well, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Let me get to it. His grandfather was a Rockefeller fixer who taught him because he okay. had that antitrust stuff against him in the '90s. So he bought the press. Okay, that's he why did. you don't. That's why the Epstein thing didn't go anywhere with him. He he had a hundred. He started with a hundred million dollars. He had some guy that dropped out and worked his way up. He could drop out of college. He had a hundred million dollars. His mother was a a high place CEO at uh, Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft, I think. What's uh, Bill Gates's company? Is that Microsoft? Uh, not the other one. Um, Bill Gates is Microsoft, right? Yeah. IBM. Had... IBM is a uh, yeah. yeah IBM. So. He already had an in with everything. He's a old money, rich guy. All these people now, you know, people talk about like the 1%, it, we, way past, it's like the 0.001% have that much fucking money that they get to steer things wherever the fuck they want. So well, Bill Gates, for example, has been- Dangerous, that guy. Well, he's been doing it in Africa this whole time and you never hear anything but like, oh, the Gates Foundation- what they do is test out their wackadoo tech ideas on Africans and they get all this credit when they should have just bought them like m tubing, medical tubes that cost 30 bucks, mosquito nets. So remember the conspiracy that the vaccine puts a microchip in you that they kept saying? Yes, Those were idiots. The RNA is a, yes, yeah. Um, so that's not based on nothing. I thought it was almost a fake story to just smear people and no one, because I never heard anybody say that. But what it is, is it's, he did test a rubella vaccine that was a patch and it had a microchip in it that would go subdermally. So you'd have, and so that's where that came from. That's a real thing that they tested out. Most rumors Whatever. are based on some truth. Yeah. So, so then you have people that whose job it is to like kind of muddy the waters and make it like, what are you? One of these people think I, I've never heard anyone say that MRNA changes your DNA. I've never heard anyone say those words. I must've heard that debunked by Media people like a dozen times where I'm like, no one was saying that. You know, I'm always like, I don't, they talk about this is what the idiots believe. And then I'm like, I don't know any of these people. I haven't heard any of these people say that. Like, <laughs> and so, uh, uh, wait, oh, do you have that uh, German thing, Mike? I'll find it if you don't. Okay. Check this one out.
soll dann erst diese Impfpflicht ähm, scharf schalten, wenn sie nötig ist. Ist das dann nicht viel zu spät? Ähm, wir, wir müssen uns ähm, are, are, are und ja. Alles okay? Ich glaube, wir sollten abbrechen. Wir machen an dieser Stelle hier weiter. Sie haben es gesehen, der Kollege Pfeffer in Berlin. Okay. That's just, that looks just like a stroke. Yeah, well, um, okay, so now the last video that I need, Mike, is um, Dr. Drew talking. I mean, you're not going to believe this shit. When you, it's Dr. Drew talking to Heather McDonald. Uh, yeah, here, I'll, I'll get, I'm sending it to you. Um, here, I'm sending it to you right now, Mike. I got it right here. I have it. Oh, you got it? Awesome. It's like three minutes. Yeah, watch this. Is there anything that you so there she is now so, time wise because uh, you know when i asked the doctors two to, about two to that three. they said oh normally wait wait go back go back go back go back a little bit go two back to, a little two bit two to three like, weeks back 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 back, back. okay she just after that broke her skull yeah we looked back and i did get the booster um mm -hmm. which i had double fiber and moderna booster um mm -hmm. three weeks Shit, that's what I to the day of the fall is there yeah. anything that you've seen about time wise? Because, uh, you know, when I asked the doctors two to, about two to that, three. they said, oh, normally. OK, go ahead. Two to two to three weeks. Two to three weeks is where you see really? a lot of this stuff. I have a friend. I have a friend that got the booster and he is just he got really destroyed by it. He still can't walk across the room. He's having all kinds of symptoms. There's a lot of funny stuff. Uh, we don't really know what it all is and where it's coming from. but. It's still worth doing it. I'm not. I'm not at the point where I'm saying that it's it's still worth the risk, but it's got a lot of funny side effects and and syncope. It's called fainting is one of them, and I think it's yeah. from the POT syndrome, P O T T S. And so, you know, I was worried. What I wanted to check was to make sure you didn't have any evidence of myocarditis. Um, you know, when you were you which were which is that's why I wanted that. Which is an inflammation of the heart, and it changes the way the heart muscle okay. functions a little bit. And that's that's why I was ho red hot on that echocardiogram. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I she, mean. So. Wait, wait, let's see what she says know, here. She, yeah, what can I do now? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think I'm going to get the fourth booster, though. I <laughs> there, there is not. Yeah, there's not yet evidence. There's I think not I'm science done. I'm done right, right now. now. Press pause. So oh, she, that's the kicker. She's like, you know, I don't think I'm going to get a fourth booster. And he yeah. goes, there's no evidence for that yet. Well, guess what? The there is no. The, 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 oh, what evidence? What do you know? What do you know? They're already saying that we're probably going to need a fourth. Who's saying that? The CDC. But now they backed off of that. Okay. It's funny. So, they also backed off of, oh, well, you know, remember how we said you should get it three weeks apart? Yeah. Yep, um, I know. Show, it's eight weeks. Well, what study? How many people waited eight weeks, you jackasses? Well, guess what? We don't know. Because you only see study. Israel had like fourth boosters. Now, I didn't do a booster because I'm like, you know, when it first came out, the vaccine, like people- Now like, I'm petrified. Know, now, fuck, I got another two days before my three weeks is up. If you make it past three weeks, you probably won't faint. But um, when that first, we did the story on Jimmy's show, when that first came out, and Jimmy got all this flack, like he's an anti vac No, he's not. He got vaccinated. He got injured. It's not who's against. They change the definition to mean if you're against mandates, then you're anti-vax. I don't know if you know that. That's the official. So in the Oxford Dictionary, is that some? And uh, so, OK, so he showed two clips that were from the same day. One is the CDC lady, Walensky, and they were asking about the boosters. They're like, when can the boosters? And she goes, those are right now for 65 and over. Um, they haven't been approved yet for people under 65. OK, then he then. Jimmy played clip same day, Jen Psaki, with a chart. She says, yes, you can get the boosters. They're ready to go. Everybody should go out and get a booster. And they said, so that's that's not fringe information. That's the main sources with two different Correct. things. Yeah. Yeah. So then they approved the boosters very quickly. The two people from the FDA, I don't know if you heard about it. It was in the news. They stepped down in protest. The heads of the vaccine department at the FDA. Step down. Yeah, I did see that. I did see. It. Well, you know what's ironic because it wasn't supposed to be approved for people under sixty-five that quickly. Correct. And this is the shit that happens now. And and so then now the thing was a flag salute now to go go get that stuff, like to prove that you're one of the good people or some shit. So you see how gung ho the reporter that collapsed 
She was saying, well, if the mandates aren't fast enough, how are we going to pull? And she get conks out. It's like, it, that's that the irony. Like a stroke. I'll be honest. That looked like a stroke. Cause like she had the par- facial paralysis of a stroke. Dude, people freeze frame it and like one eye is going up this yes, way and one eye is going down. Stroke. And, that's uh, a stroke, which on the onset of these stupid shots was one of the things people were getting. And it's yeah. ironic now that they're saying that there's a new strain and the two, the two new symptoms are uh, headaches and dizziness. The new strain of Omicron, you mean? Yeah, there's a new, yeah, there's a new uh, variant of the Omicron. So, here, want to hear something wild? So a year, like a year ago, the guy they banned because he went on Rogan, but he also did, he did Jimmy show first, uh, Malone. He was saying, you can't vaccinate. You're not going to, they were like, we're going to stop the spread right now. It never did that, that the whole time they said it prevents it. It never did. And if you look up the FDA website to at YouTube would censor you, if you said it didn't, I think now they don't, but if you look up the official information, they go, well, we hope it does because generally vaccines do, but we don't have the data. That was the, who the hell knew that was the official? That's not what I saw on TV. That ain't what yeah. a bunch of people said. That's the official. I didn't the believe it. The truth of the matter is it takes, it takes years and years to get a vaccine approved. But no, this one came out in less than six months. So anybody right. Operate, that says that they Trump. know Operation Warp definitively yeah. that it's not dangerous, well, you're just stupid at that point. Well, like you not, can't definitively not, uh, tell, yeah. tell me that. Right. You, so you don't do your own research. So Dr. Drew, he goes, I'm not ready to say it's not worth I'm like, he's, the reason he's doing that is he doesn't want his show censored. That's why he's saying Absolutely. I mean, they have and, to do a yeah. fine line. I mean, let's be honest. Well, you can't. They're hiding. So the CDC hasn't really. The reason we get all the studies, like the fourth shot and all that, they all came from Israel. Why? Because the data here is being held back by the CDC. They don't want to get really, they just said, well, we don't want to get misinterpreted. You yeah, don't want it to be God, God forbid we just give you the actual data and, and written in uh, medical ease that 90% of us, if you really read it, you can kind of take the text, like the context out of a report, even if it's medically written. Let's be yeah, honest. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bunch of graphs and a bunch of fancy words that, guess what? You can re- if you don't know the word, guess what you can do? Oh, you can type it in in the search engine and find out what the fuck right. it was. Well, also, it's like I knew most, what that, that it's not what to he keep was saying it, is yeah. about the EKG. It's like, oh shit, he's worried about her heart being uh, about to explode from being too big. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Um, it's to hide it from people that do know how to read it. Exactly. Like the people that don't know how probably aren't even going to bother look it up. But nope. the 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 uh, bunch of doctors at Harvard and Yale did a Freedom of Information Act to get the data on the uh, vaccine from Pfizer. Yeah, there are, believe it or not, there are good doctors out there that truly want to know what exactly did we just give to all these people? Well, guess what? I don't know if you heard that, this part, Pfizer and the FDA were in court to make sure that the data can't come out for 75 years, which is longer than the JFK info that they just delayed for 30 years. That's and then amazing. the judge said, you got to do it in uh, three months when, trust me, it ain't coming out in three months. They're going to find a way to make that because that's the oh, FDA. Absolutely. And, oh, you know, they'll, they'll put it on there. Well, seven years, because that's the trademark for our, our, yeah, uh, it's proprietary. Our they, yeah. go, we don't, they go, we don't have the uh, employees to get that information together. We don't have enough people. We only have 10 people in the department. And the judge is like, well, you employ like 18,000 people. So maybe put some in and get it. So why would First of all, what is it? PDF? What do you need more than <laughs> click yeah. send? Because they need the people to go through and redact things. That's oh, of why. course. Sure they do. Sure so, they do. So I didn't know when they say peer review, it's you don't get to see the peer, the, the guys that are supposed to look at the peer reviewed study. You don't get to know what that is. The, the doctors don't get to see it. And all the doctors have to just go with it. Or you like, so the Jimmy, I don't know if his doctor, but my girlfriend's doctor, I, I got two shots. And I was like, I'll just hold off. I've never had COVID. I know people. I had it twice. I had it twice. I had it before it was popular. And yeah. I'll be honest, it was, it was bad. The first, yeah, I I bet. Was, I, it, the, at first it was bad. Do you read what I they say it, now? Uh, in January again. Yeah. And it was kind of, it was not nearly as bad. Yeah, not nearly as bad. Guess what's more effective? But I also got, I got the, the other, the injection, whatever. I forgot what it's called. The, uh, 
the antibiotic that they put in the IV. Monoclonals or no? Yeah, I got that too. So now I'm really. Well, that's worried. supposed to be really well. That's supposed to work really well. Monoclonal antibody. It didn't really do much. I'll be honest. For Omicron. Mm -hmm. You had oh, I, Omicron. Yeah. It's supposedly it's not working that well in Omicron. Yeah, I didn't but, see any real. It didn't make know, me feel any better. But you know, Omicron uh, was always the worst. Like. When they I started, want the they, next one to be Megatron just because I grew up with the Transformers. Let's be honest. Yeah, no, that's the, that's the, uh, I mean, that's the, the joke, I guess. But uh, Omicron was never like, they were hyping that up like it was deadly. Like people I know went and got boosters because of Omicron. Omicron's the one, it's not pandemic, it's called an endemic now. That's the one that you can live with and everybody can drop the shit. Please. Be honest, I it felt like a really bad cold, except I was exhausted. That's the yeah, only that's Omicron. Difference. That's what Omicron does. But yeah. so I know, I mean, dude, I know at least a dozen people that had three shots and COVID twice. I mean, how much of that shit's in your fucking body all the time? So I haven't gotten it once. Now what they say, have you seen this? This is not like some shit I'm making up. They're talking about, uh, uh, it was just in the Washington Post. Oh, it was probably with that doctor that resigned and uh, those two doctors that resigned from the FDA. The best thing to have is something called a hybrid immunity, which is one shot and you had COVID. That's the strongest have, resistance. Oh, let's, oh, you have that. What's, oh, that, is that herd or is that the herd thing? No, where you the have the herd? no hybrid immunity is just like probably if you already had it, it probably is fine because since they were spacing the shots too close together, just like um, you know, nothing for nothing. Let's I I get it. There people have died from it. It is bad, but this is not the pandemic to end all pandemics. This isn't like the the flu in the nineteen fourteen well, and the this larger isn't issue. That. Yeah, they didn't. So, okay, we need to get everyone vaccinated because that'll stop it. Okay, well, why did they not all the poor countries? Why are people getting their third helping here? And a bunch of people never even had one shot in poor countries where you would think it would spread the most. Then they travel. So, and and it was going to be a free. Uh, as, uh, who was it that that in England? Uh, they Bill Gates got them to work with AstraZeneca instead of making the patent open. And he goes, "No, it'll be better because we can distribute it better that way. You know, if you team up with a private industry." See, this is where Republicans yeah, sure. suck. The, the, Democrats and Republicans are not different. I, I know people think they are, but they're not. They're, they're all about private. We got to get private industry doing, we got to run it like a business. Like, well, now we have that. I hope everybody enjoys it. They, so they never distributed the vaccines to all these countries. Guess what the poor countries had to use? Ivermectin. <laughs> yeah. And, and amazing how it works too. Guess who's got better numbers with COVID than any anybody of us. but us. All of Africa has better numbers. They had a thing with Japan where they called it the Japanese miracle. This is the article we read in, um, on Jimmy's show. They're like, nobody knows why, but their, their numbers just start going down. And they were like, maybe there's a genetic thing, you know, that uh, Japanese have. No, they were using ivermectin. They just wouldn't say that Japan was using ivermectin. Now, I don't know with Omicron how well it works. I, I, I've seen. Um, I'm, I'm assuming not... as each, I mean, usually as it goes on, each branch of whatever entity gets weaker and weaker. So if it worked on the, the bad one, I'm assuming that it would work really well on this weaker one. Well, the amount of taxation on your system, having those that close together, that's why they put it out like, well, it might maybe should be a space farther apart. The, the article, the article is like, it's not magic. Uh, it's not like a magic formula or something I'm like, oh, that sounds scientific. God, it sounds like not science. I'm kind of glad I work where I work now because I, I have, there's a lot of good people that, that kind of set me to the side and kind of put me right. And yeah, they, they all say the same thing. It's like, listen, we're, it, this isn't a miracle. It's, it's just something to reduce the possibility of you being very sick. Well, why they say, right. And that's, so I got it because I didn't want to get very sick. Exactly. Um, so that's how it should be told to us. Not, oh, this is the end all be all. You no, don't have it's it. worse than that. They you're told a it, bad person if you don't get yes. it. So your friends don't get sick. Yeah. They well, that's told not it, how that works. They told it to you like. You're doing it for other people. I've never heard of anything working me that me way. Me I didn't get polio for my sister. I got polio vaccine for me. Yeah. So the reason they did that was it's this like this is arrogant thing of uh, the noble lie. So like when Fauci was like, you don't eat a mask. Remember they asked him and he's like, oh, please yeah, don't mention that fucking tool bag's name. Yeah. So 
once you start doing that, you're not a doctor, you're a politician. Okay. So he's like, they all think they can do the noble lie. So the idea is they're afraid people won't get the second shot if they don't make them too close together. That's what that decision, why that was. Good point. Right. And so why did, why are a bunch of people in the world who didn't even get one shot? Well, because those countries don't have billions to pay for a massive supply to give to everybody multiple times. So that's the ironic that the, the countries that have a organized uh, socialized uh, m- medicine and health insurance that's universal, their numbers are a lot lower than ours too. Well, they also, um, like, uh, I don't know what UK numbers are, but even their health system is getting like, it, it, that's an amazing thing to me. Like I had a, some, I had a con- kind of conservative guy on my show from, uh, who lives in UK and we're, t- and he, you know, he was saying all well, like standard stuff, you know, like you don't need big government and blah, you know, you know, like the, the, the average conservative. And I go, I, I brought up, um, you know, what surprise billing is with, uh, health insurance. Like you could get, if your doctor go, goes to an anesthesiologist that you didn't pick, that's not in your network. And then you get a bill oh, yeah. later for like eight grand. They were going to have uh, a law to try to end that, not even end it, but make it so that the insurance company and the hospital have to work it out and not bother you with it before it gets to you. You might still have to pay it, but it was something that was killed by a Democrat. They're all in the pocket of these companies. Oh yeah. Well, so I brought it up to him. You know what he said? He goes, he goes, what? No, no. Yeah. Obviously healthcare you should get. <laughs> like he's a, <laughs> he's a right-wing guy who's like, they, that's not even a thing in their mind that that wouldn't be a thing that you're supposed to get. It's just here. And I don't think people know here. I didn't know this. It's kind of upsetting. I told to a friend and he was like, well, you got to watch where you get your information. I go, no, buddy, this is, was not like an expose. This was them bragging about it. Remember the, what if somebody needs a hospital bed and you're clogging up the beds because somebody unvaxxed is taking up a bed and then a loved one can't get a hospital bed because you, know, you ever hear that? Like the that moral. Yeah. Okay, so that's already stupid, number one, because what are they going to come in and tell you? Sorry, we can't operate on you because somebody didn't get vaxxed and they have the bed. Or also, what if you're a fat asshole or you smoked like I did or whatever? You did a million other things that are taking up a bed. Um, But here's what I didn't think of that someone pointed out to me. Why are there not enough beds? I would think in a pandemic, you would go, we better get a lot of beds going. And and they were supposed to. They were supposed to get emergency, but they don't. You know why? There's always not enough beds. It's run that way on purpose, and they're proud of it because hospitals, three quarters of them are owned by the same monopoly, but they're run by private equity firms. So private equity firms, ICU beds are not profitable. So they purposely run those low, and the way they sell it, this is how I was reading about it. They were saying how great this is from a few years ago because there was a flu pandemic in um, California. They had to put up tents because there weren't enough beds for this massive flu season that they had in like 2018. Um, they go, no, that way you can focus on preventative care. And they, they sell it like it's like efficiency and you know it's affordable housing, that kind of nonsense. They run it that way on purpose. And everybody here, I don't get into anything with socialism or capital. I don't care about any of those words. They mean nothing to me. Um, they're there to program you. They're there to be like, well, oh, that's socialism. That's a, that's, what is this? Oh, that's a, so, so like, People are programmed to think something doesn't work. Now it's so bad. It's amazing the people that I know that are like, I I don't have, I'm, I'm non-binary politically, but I I know so many people that are Republican conservatives that are like almost anti-war now, which you never saw that back in the day. You know, like that's an amazing thing is the stuff is so bad now. It's run so shitty now that even people that their most hardcore things, they're not even there's like no trust well, in anything. I think the world has lost the art. The, the, there used to be an art form called um, per, perspective. Like we've lost the ability to keep a perspective. Like you we always go to one side or the other. Yeah, we never you take didn't, the time to actually say, okay, where are we actually at? That perspective. A bunch of people do. But that's, that, look, that's the thing. It hasn't. Most people mm-hmm. do have that. Guess who doesn't have it? Our the leaders. people at the top who run everything. So now- when I, because I, I have my gnome who owns a comedy salary talking about it. And I'm like, it's like, well, do you want the government to run your health care? I'm like, no, I'd like a, comp- a corporation the size of a small government to run it where I don't, there's no constitution and there's nothing. 
they're so big now. And this is not like a party that did like the reason the news ultimately sucked is because they're owned by six companies own all the regular news. You don't say, you don't say. And who put, who did that? That was the Clintons. The Clintons did stuff that Reagan couldn't even dream of. I like that Reagan, by the way, who set a lot of this shit in motion. I don't know like why I know he didn't wear a jacket one time in Moscow and it looked strong, but other stuff he did, you know, that guy got installed by Hollywood producers. They put him in SAG as the head of SAG back in the day. The moguls were like, we like this guy. He's got good hair. He's not a commie. They hated unions and all that. So they put him in charge. Then they ran him for president and he became president. His entire second term, he had Alzheimer's. He, he was senile the whole, I mean, that shows you how bad Joe Biden is because Reagan did a whole term senile <laughs> and somehow- Better better than when him. he said when he said i can't i cannot recall he could not recall he was not lying <laughs> <It turns laughs> you know i didn't i you know it's, it's funny that you are probably not too far off the truth on that one yeah so they, yeah uh, his speeches you know, but they, it's one chain different. yeah if people think like this you know when people argue if the election was stolen you know the whole election stolen like I can't even believe that's a debate of, I'm like, you don't think it's a fraud every election? Basically, you got to win by enough of a margin that the fraud that's going to happen every election, you still win in spite of that. So that's Trump's screw up that he didn't beat. And also the mail in or whatever. But I remember Al Gore when everybody was like, it, was, it came down to, I don't know, they're like this lady who's like a clown. <laughs> she had like clown makeup pulled aside. We Come on, it have, was hanging chads, don't you remember? It was hanging yes. chads. Like to even argue about if it's fixed, we already have it fixed. It's called the Electoral College. We already have that built in to make sure. I think it's time to get rid of that. I, I honestly think it's I used to not be done its purpose. Against it. I used to be against getting rid of it because I was like, well, you then we're gonna have New York and California decide the elect. But the dude who I had this guy Coleman Hughes, is black kid, is like crazy small. I'd say kid, he's like probably 30, but he's young. I mean, he's no, like he's some kind kid. of He's some kind of turbo nerd genius guy that's on, but he told me a thing that I, I was like, Oh, you got a point. He goes, well, California had these, you know, they wanted to get rid of the, um, in the state constitution that you can't discriminate. They wanted to get, that was one of the propositions they were voting on this last and it was everyone voted against it. Okay. So that's the programming of like, everyone's stupid and they're not going to think, and they're going to vote this way. That's the lie that they keep telling. That's the people on top telling that. And that's what they tell themselves. That's why they, that's why they or lie. the other the other avenue they like to take about the electoral college is it's the fail safe to make sure that there's no improprieties in the election. Right. And it, so it's so that's what everything is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Right. And, I, you know, and look, I don't know at the time if that was a thing, you know, if you figure it's a new country and you got to figure that out and it's a bunch yeah, of they, states they that don't want to be a country. Because back then there really was no way they could possibly tell if there was voting fraud because it was too the country was too broad and they didn't have the technology or the know-how right. to really do it so in the infancy of our country great idea but now we could really if we really wanted to be honest about the election we could probably dig in and really find like where right. it went awry but well why also bother? also the idea is you have to be a landowner and all that so that's still around now. So like, what's that Norcross? That's the family. Mm, yeah. So that's who, Great guy. that's who like your vote counts. If you're them, if you're just some schmuck who like your vote does not matter. I mean, people think their vote half the country doesn't vote number one, and that suits the people just fine. Absolutely. They're never going to be like, why don't we do something? So people think that this works. They both sides want to keep the numbers down on the people they think that they imagine won't vote for them. They get it wrong all the time. Of course uh, they and they don't want people that aren't like, you know, the what is that term? The job. I don't know. Who's the guy? Frank Lutz. That's the guy that came up with job creators. You ever hear that? The job creators. That was Mitt Romney's big thing of like, we want to help the job creators, which is such a hilarious, like incorrect, because the pe people that own run businesses are not job. What creates jobs is demand. So customers right. create jobs. Right. The, the people and a run strong business, economy would make more customers. Right. So it, if you own a business, you're not there to create jobs. That would be a terrible way to run a business. You're there to run as lean as you can. And that's fine with me. I don't care about that. What I don't want is 
then conferring these extra powers where you now you're like, I'm, not, I'm a custodian of the environment and I'm a some like, no, you're not. Somebody else should be handling that. You just worry about your thing that you do and don't break the goddamn law. And then someone else will handle that. So, so now all this stuff all comes from the same place is like that. Remember in the great reset, that jerk off from uh, the world economic forum, that German guy that looks like a uh, German Rupert Murdoch. The guy, you you will own nothing and like it. That that fucking hump. Well, anything Germany says is usually uh, very biased towards industry and usually not really applicable he's to not, anybody. No, no, no. But he's not, it's not. He's not a government guy. The World Economic Forum is the, the Davos where all the yeah. billionaires go. So that's where like they go to see Greta Thunberg, scold them probably while they jerk off. I imagine that's what they got her there for, is maybe, for her to go, maybe, how yeah. dare you? And they go, oh, we're so bad. Ooh. And then that most of the people that go there don't even go to those stupid talks. They go party. And that's where they go to make deals and decide how they're going to. So now what we have is when uh, I was in New York or in Bush years, that was the neocons. Remember the neocons were like, we need to go to war. We need to have this whole thing where we, uh, it's global trade, you know, NAFTA, all that bullshit. Those are the people, if you ever know, I, I don't know how many like people you met that like make money like that, but they're not, they don't consider themselves American. Most of them, they will tell you flat. I had a buddy who explained it to me flat out. He, he, he made his money uh, selling domain names like real estate at first. I used to work for him. He had a site called Consumption Junction. I would write stuff for it because I was hard on money and it, like, it was good. You know, he paid me to do it and we would hang out and then his job became shipping jobs out of America to pl other places. And these were like tech jobs. They weren't like blue collar yeah, jobs. Well, and he was like, I don't care. There's a, it's a market. you got to go for like the leanest cost. He goes, basically, I'm like a global citizen. Like, I don't give a shit. That's how they all feel. And that's why you get that thing with the little people. See, and now it's getting, it's not even capitalism now. It's, it's like feudal. It's like it's a tech new the NWO. It's the new world of order. Well, that was the thing uh, Butch said, and that was like, I, that I think had more to do with like, we're going to keep NATO going forever, <laughs> but but it's the same now, mindset. How's NATO helping the Ukraine right now? Uh, yeah, right. That now, now, and so that's hilarious. The first time the it's tested in 40 years, it's failing epically. Yeah, and they could have just not done that NATO shit and kept their word. And I, I, what's funny is Putin's like trolling them using all the America. He's like, oh, we're sending a peacekeeping force. We're like, you're a real brick. <laughs> what a, what a dick. <laughs> Saying all of our stuff back at us, son of a bitch. And uh, I want to know that? how much of our stuff we left in Afghanistan is now being used against the Ukrainians. Wait, you think that Russia took the stuff from Afghanistan to Ukraine? Why not? Because the, Tali the Taliban has it. Yeah. And you don't think that they might be in cahoots? No, I never That's bought into really the, good stuff there. I don't think that they're in cahoots. No, was that what are you talking about? The thing where they were paying bounties? Remember, they were like, Russia is paying bounties to kill American troops. Yeah. Are they? So you're telling me that you had, the people that already were killing American troops needed the needed incentive the, uh, yeah, of a bounty. That was yeah. shit to keep us in war forever. That it's actually, if you want, uh, Glenn Greenwald's good still. I, I watch him. And um, when Obama, remember Obama wanted to get the hell out of there? And they were, and he got bullied into a surge. Actually, they're like, "No, you should send a surge." That's who. That's the tail that wags the dog. Is those people, the Pentagon and these assholes. So Biden, that bothered him that they did that with Obama, and that's why Biden abruptly like, "No, we're getting everybody." That's the one thing I'm good with that Biden did is that he has I'm not done mad at him, but I don't want those idiots to have that much weaponry because obviously they know how to use it. I mean, honestly, it won't take long. Well, first of all. I consider the Taliban our last hope against intersectional feminism. So I'm happy to let them have it. We also robbed them as we left of all this money because they're having a famine there. So, hey, sell the shit if you can, make some money. I don't care. That's outrageous. To be mad for leaving, I saw every, and that's the only I'm time. Not, I'm not mad. I, I but, just wish we would have done it in a more organized fashion. I, I promise you, there's no way they could have done it. First of all, that was the, so whole media, only time they've ever been mean to Biden, the only time they've ever attacked Biden. We did. Like that. Kyle does a great impression that gets like squelched. On him. The only time they could attack him was when he ended a war. As far as it leaving the right way, that's really focusing. 
and they all did this. They all like focusing on the wrong thing, which is the 20 fucking years that we shouldn't have been there at all. That's the disaster. The leaving is the one bright spot. The better way to do it was going to be, and I'm sure this is why he pulled out, because this is probably a personal thing with him, watching the Obama thing, was they'd find a way to stay there forever. That's what the hell they mean by that. They're going, no, there's a right way to do it. And you're like, no, you're not too far. I, you're not I don't too believe far. in any, I remember from 20 years, because I remember I was in New York when the Twin Towers went down and I was on board. My, there's one guy, Lee Camp, who's a, there are a few people were against the war, but I remember, and Lee's on like RT now still, or he, but Lee was an, against it. And I was like, well, somebody's got to blow up. I, my attitude was somebody's got to blow up. Um, I, I didn't think 9-11 was an inside job. I thought uh, uh, that was done by who they said. But the part that's the Sunnite conspiracy because they did it openly was somehow Iraq has something to do with this. That's, that's a very obvious fake thing that I didn't see through. I'm like, yeah, well, they're Muslim or something. I don't know, whatever. But somebody got to blow up or so for this and uh, one's as good as another. I think Dennis Miller had a joke like somebody picks a ticket in the punk lottery and it's Iraq, so good. <laughs> and so they just rode. So that's it, the emotion of the time. And I thought that I consider myself super emotional back then, but it is that. It, they yeah, know how to work off your emotions to have you go well, along yeah, but, with anything. As with anything, when it comes to just follow the money, who, was in, who made all the money off of that war? Yeah, all the same people that are making the money now. And uh, exactly. So it's even it's, more it's, of a. Like, it's funny that, like, and our, our founding fathers knew that this was going to happen. So they tried to protect us from ourselves. And they're, they're now, the Constitution is more, how can we twist this to our purpose as opposed to, hey, let this be the testament of why we shouldn't do what we're about to do? Um, yeah, no, it's, it's really, because uh, that, that thing of being imperial was, was pretty standard. Like, I always try to think, like, how did I think about it back then? Because I was never, like, you know, I was Jehovah Witness when I was young, so I didn't have any kind of political. But I definitely had a thing of, like, I guess how I thought is, like, America's not the worst of these. We're not worse than, like, these people, you know? So so what? Kind of are. Yes, as it happens, <laughs> turns out we're one of the worst. <laughs> we're, you know, like, I love my country, don't get me wrong, country, God, family, but the it's and then you know what it's not us it's the leaders we choose are just it's bad well i'll do one better you don't get to choose they they they're cast right. now like and like kamala harris where the hell did she come from some they took I her can, to martha's vineyard came from her knees but that's all another from story. what she nothing. came from what nothing her knees <laughs> wait what is that what, what's the joke well that's how she got her job Oh, wow. That is really. <laughs> oh, because she was fucking that mayor. Well, I have to say, I don't hold that against her. That's probably her banging that old man is one of the kindest, most human things she's probably ever done in her whole probably, life. Probably so. Um, probably so. That's probably one of her better qualities. But the, yeah. the like, she, not, hey, fire, listen, she's not unattractive either. Let's be honest. She's not the, unattractive. the point is, they take her to Martha's Vineyard. If you're going to be like, where did Obama come from? Where do any of these people come from? You, like, you, I, I never know. I just know, like, the store, there were, like, Bill Gates, that thing I just recently found out. You know how I find it out, too, is, is talking to commie friends. The actual leftists that are, like, you know, uh, not about identity nonsense, and they're about, <laughs> like, just the the stuff that they're supposed to be, you know? Like, like th that's they they get censored along with the people that get labeled as right. So the only thing you're allowed to be now is a neoliberal, which is basically a neocon with no Jesus. All they did was rebrand. Well, it's funny. I just read a T-shirt and I put it on my Facebook because I thought it was funny. The definition of racist is anybody that can be a liberal in an argument. Yeah, or like fascist or anything else or yeah. whatever that. But it's these things like, are that's so. The first thing it's like anything you can talk about how the weather is today. And if it's a liberal and you say something that pisses them off, oh, you're a racist. Well, what the fuck does that have to are, do with the weather? Do you mean online or you're talking to people just in real in life? General. Just in general. Well, that's what I mean. Like in general, because I online, definitely. In real life, most of these things never happen to me. <laughs> in real life, I what never meet anyone. Yeah, like how often in real life, honestly, do you meet anyone that like really gets into that stuff? It, you'd have to be in a real specific areas like Portland or like, uh, you know, even oh, in Portland. Oh, yeah, I won't go, I just I won't play, go to Washington. Washington can fall off the face of the earth. 
I'd Washington fine. State or DC? Yeah, Washington State. Yes, uh, they're just atrocious. Well, I'll go to these places, and you talk to people, and they're not into it. It's it's very small groups of people online, especially with tech. That's the new oil man. That's the new like, you know. So, and they hire people, you know, especially if like a corporate or environment. If you ever work in it, they want. You, it's not like they give you orders in government, like from, it's like the World Economic Forum guy is giving, okay, now do this mandate. You got picked because you're that type of person anyway, that was going to probably do what they want. That's how you advance. So everything's set up for cowards and, and like greedy, like power hungry idiots. That's what it's set up for. It, it's, it's really something. Right. And it's sad because like nobody has their own opinions anymore because you can't. Because if you have um, an opinion that goes against the the rule set, you're labeled. Right. Yeah, right. It's not. It's not a nobody has yeah. them. They do. It's let's make it Can't not worth them. it. Yeah, like sanctions. Look at like, Joe Rogan, for instance. All he did is express his own opinion and look at him. He's like a pariah. He didn't even express an. I mean, the thing he was in trouble for, which uh, which was having that guy Doctor Malone on, that was that guy's opinion. He's not even a news show. He's a he, uh, he's a friend of mine. Exactly. He, it's, no, he's a it's, podcast. It's, it's, he's not it's, it's, um, in competition. Right. If you don't that. like what is being said, turn him off. Don't but ruin a guy's life because he it, doesn't agree with you. But that's the thing. The an, a regular person that you that you might know. Now there's a bunch of people that know. Like I can't. They've never listened to Rogan. They're, they're whatever. No, they're, they're listening to the media. Right. So and the reason for that is is they don't. No one's watching them. So. No. It's, it's really like not people in general. It's like these companies are losing their grip because of the nature of things. And now it's always a scramble to find a way to keep control. So, so you, know, you mean CNN, like Facebook changing its name overnight for no reason? Well, that's because uh, Facebook's like once Apple made it so you can't take uh, the whole business was stealing your, your, your uh, stuff and selling it, your information. So Apple to fuck with him. I, I don't know what, I guess that, the guy's a piece of shit too. The other, the Apple CEO, Tim, whatever. Oh but, yeah. But anybody like, that runs that company is somewhat suspect to me. Yeah. That's his um little pet, you know, thing is like, Oh, that's where Facebook is where all the misinformation is. So he's screwing with Zuckerberg. He didn't care that they were stealing information until he saw like a political thing. And Zuckerberg, whose entire business is that he's making a bet because, you know, Facebook beat the, I remember MySpace. I used to be on MySpace and friends. What? What? Remember that? what is that? Yeah. Some kind of alien technology. But why did that end? Because when phones came out, Facebook was on your phone. See, cell phones were the big thing that changed it. So what, what Zuckerberg is trying to do is make a bet on the next thing, which would be virtual reality. But it's probably not going to be that. It's probably going to be augmented reality, like right. Pokemon Go something, which makes more sense. Yes. So he's trying we're to not, get in. We're not at that level yet, like to jump that far ahead. There's, there's yeah, so plenty like of a, things in between that have to happen. Right. So he's trying to stake, but the thing is funny is then you see all these people buying virtual real estate, you know? Oh, or the, the ones that they're already setting up laws for uh, virtual rape. Yeah, that, okay. So Are, we did that story too. What? So that was, a, so one of the testers, because also keep in mind, these are like, ask like autistic nerds that are working <laughs> at the company. Let's go because I was testing VR. Are you like like Musk? Did you see it? The the she like the virtual assault and and she's describing it. It was just a head with floaty hands was coming. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried. I tried to listen to all of it. I got two minutes before I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? And then there's something called teabagging the kids are doing now. If you ever played video games, that's been a thing forever. It was just a natural thing people do playing Call of Duty is go teabag each other. They start reporting it like it's this new epidemic. But there's, I think the thing behind that, like my little suspicion is it makes it more real. Like you don't have a real alternate universe until someone's being sexually assaulted. Then, you know, it's a real place. It's not just fake. Exactly. Look at like, real crime happens like, here. Oh yeah. Real crime. Like what, really the story is, shot? did you feel yeah. getting shot? The story is you, really somebody that's been shot. I'm sure will be pretty pissed off at you if you're reporting that you got shot online. But that's the idea was language is violent the whole idea was to make that real so yeah. that's why things need to be for people that's that why we need retarded. to go back to the good old days where we were taught things like sticks and stones may break my bones but names will never hurt me um i mean i mean people actually were killed with sticks and stones also at that time so it, yeah, it well, really true. had a 
it was based yeah, on man. truth. They were like, please, you can call me names. Just stop hitting me with sticks. Yeah, yeah. You, but... you, you got a phone. <laughs> 330 is a flagpole. I mean, come on. It ain't even like good old days. It's just a thing of all these little things are for the little people to quibble about. The, the main thing is like, I don't, it's, I don't know good, but because we are kind of in good old days in that it's like the Gilded Age at the end of the 1800s. In that sense, it is like that. It's just that instead of an oil, oil and steel running shit, it's it's a uh, you know Bezos and Zuckerberg. I, I think his company is like not doing too well, but uh, it's all these tech people, and and that's a big difference, by the way, with China, which I always tell people, uh, you know, now I don't think this would be a good law to have or something to do here, but emotionally, I'm very into it. Uh, it if you're a billionaire in China, you can be a billionaire. But there's not really any point to being a billionaire because why not just be a millionaire? Like, what's the reason to keep getting more billions? I at don't understand point? that. I get it. Maybe it's because you and I were not born into. Uh, no, great I'll tell wealth. you what it is. What it is but, is the, the power. See, of course, in China. Is. If China, you're a billionaire, and you even say one thing, not even bad, just not that indicates you're not you're outshining the master. You disappear, and you come back and go, oh yeah, no, well, it's, uh, I don't know, I must have been crazy. Here, the reason to be a billionaire is to control things. That's to have a dynasty that lasts, like, and then to control market share, to own everything and create your own little country that you're in charge. And then you get to be like, that's what you get to do here. So what we have is oligarchy, the thing that commies would babble about that I thought was a stupid, like, oh, shut up about oligarchy. No, that's what we have. It's been that way for years. And it's then the just little, becoming more prevalent now because it's such a great divide between us and them. They used to well, hide it. Now they brag about what they because can there's do. no there's no um the, even there's, like Democrats used to be like a working people part. It's not no. So everyone, no one is like Republicans probably will start saying like Trump got in off that populist thing, which people couldn't get their heads around. Or well, I, I understood it immediately. I didn't think he was good, but I understood immediately what the appeal was because. All these other people, when I when I live in New York, like the Obama years, like none of them know Obama sucked. I didn't know that the stuff Listen, Obama did. I actually enjoyed his first four years. I didn't think he was that bad. I was I was actually a fan. But then he started right. this whole war on cops, and I'm like, go fuck yourself. Like, oh, Obama! I thought you were going to say the bailouts of like when the bailouts. No, the happened, thing that pissed me off about Obama is when he started opening his mouth about how bad cops were. And how he's the one that started the war on cops. I don't care what anybody else says. He well, in a lot of that. places, I mean, depending on where you are, they could be awful. I mean, it's really like luck of the. I, I, I've had every experience possible, you know, other than like doing hard time. Like I've had every kind of. I had like the thank God a cops here, just sure. helping me out. I've had the thing where I'm getting. There's always when I was a J for some reason in Cherry Hill. <laughs> Cops just didn't like him because he like, I don't know, he dressed like hip hoppy or something, but we would get pulled over for nonsense. And then, you know, the cop pulls over and found a blunt to Ray, this other comic in Philly had smoked a blunt and left it in the ashtray. And we didn't know. So a cop, no. pulls, a cop pulled us over, get this. We were, this is when video stores were around. We were turning a video. And because we entered the parking lot, this is what the cop told us. We entered the parking lot through the right way to enter. And that's very unusual because people never go in the right way. So that's why he pulled us over. Then he searched the car and uh, found a blunt. And we're like, oh, that's two Ray's blunt. That's not ours. But they took us in. The guy, now the cop himself was like, I would say almost like a timid dude. He wasn't like a, there was another one there when we got there that was like a real like hard ass. So my girlfriend had to go get money to get us out. Now she hated cops. She danced in Gloucester Township. I don't know if you know this. The cops there would shake down the dancers. They'd pull them over. You have to bribe them to go on your way. They'd find some bullshit reason and they'd take a cut of your winnings for shaking your ass. So she had a real bug up her ass. That's how people get a bad vibe with God because something happened to them. It's the same way somebody gets a, any kind of real bad thing. The people that are like, oh, I hate the police that are like these upper middle class dipshits. They don't know anything. They should love a cop. They're never going to encounter them in a way other that's positive. They heard about something, but I've been everywhere, man. I know people like I did a show in Pennsylvania. See, even as a cop, I, before I was a cop, I had a horrible experience with a just a, a cop that didn't give a shit. Well, like the real numbers in all places. Yeah, the, it, it, it's like the real numbers of it is um. It's less than one percent. That's the actual statistic. Well, less than but the shoot, one no, percent of cops. Shooting. 
tarnish a badge. Well, I mean, that's all it takes. And then it depends on where the precinct is, like in, in um, East New York. True. There's that documentary that's uh, actually really interesting about, I can't remember what the precinct was called, the 6-9 or something. And uh, the, and it's funny, the cops from other precincts were talking about how cra like crazy corrupt it was. And the one guy said like they had uh, taken a fire ladder from the firehouse to steal this guy's stash. And he goes, they were berserk. <laughs> he called them berserk. <laughs> That's like really strong. And um, this, and it's like, you get in a thing where the, where you're, it's like gangsters, you know, I mean, every, the, the government's gangsters, every power thing. It's the old quickly. Roman adage that uh, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Yeah. And so now a lot of places have consolidated power. It's in every, it's not even like just cop. Like that's the thing. It's not just cop. It's everything. Everything has this consolidated part. And then after the pandemic, you know, the CARES Act, the, which I didn't know it was this, but it was the largest upward transfer of wealth in history. The, oh, you don't say. But the way that was put was like, we, I don't know if we can send people these checks. I mean, we got to test them out and we can't just keep giving people money. They gave people this much. This is the money that they gave to people. The money they gave to every other major company was un astronomical. You didn't see that reported. You saw arguments about the piddly checks that they sent. So what's interesting to me now is the big fight to me is not left or right at all. Like, like that's the puppet show for suckers. It's populism versus elitism. Even the word populism was invented as an insult by the media back in uh, the 1800s. And when we started hearing like white supremacy as like a good thing back then, that was because black and white farmers were getting together. That's, you know, like Fred Hampton, the guy that got basically murdered by cops by the FBI. Uh, he was reaching out to the white extremists and getting, say so you're allowed, this is when you got to go. Once you're saying we could all get along. <laughs> yeah, no, X, isn't it amazing? Patrice, he's had a joke about it. Like Malcolm X was fine as long as he was like, I hate white people. As soon as he comes back with the, we can get along shit, you got to go. Uh, MLK's got to go. to King. Yeah, so very few people want to be the guy or lady to be the one saying that because you're going gonna... to. We come together, we'll realize that we were only separated so they could steal more from us because well, we're too busy fighting each other. To it's fight like a, them. a prison. Like that's how you do in prison. You separate into racial gangs against their will, where you have to be in a race gang to survive. And you separate, and the trans have their own spot, hopefully, unless it's crazy. With the, and everybody has their own little thing. And then. Well, the basketball courts, that's ours. Uh, and the weight benches, the Puerto Ricans, or, you know, you got to do that stupid shit. They're doing that with everything. They're like, they're doing it with like stupid, like Star Wars movies and shit. Like, look, that's for the whatever. And that's to keep everybody fighting. That's why identity became a thing. Well, that's and critical the race forever. theory. It's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Did you read it? Does is have you ever read us it? More. It separates us more. But have you ever, because, 12 years ago, I got into this with, with uh, somebody because it, it used to be on the Wikipedia. It, it told you everything about it, but they've changed it. The Wikipedia has been changed ever since. So basically, Republicans just discovered this now. And so people that so I watch people fight about it. it's amazing, like friends of mine that are like liberal, whatever. As soon as you say that, they're going to go, oh, it's not. It's just a legal thing. And you, they have no idea what's in it. They didn't read it. The people saying critical is they generally didn't. Who would fucking read it? Uh, I, I'm the only one who's like a big enough, like, because I was the only people going, you need to educate yourself. Because I was having this crazy nonsense said to me online all the time. So I'll go, and I'll I go, well, what are you talking? So I go, okay, I'll read it. And then, and then you read it and you realize it's some black nationalist thing, legal framework about basically the gist of his uh, segregation was good. It's everything. It's just racist stuff, but it's it's that the CRT thing is the legal part of it. It's about how the law is. So that's when they, that's what they're gonna. If you just mention CRT to somebody, they're gonna blank and go, well, no, it's just not because it is a legal thing. However, it's the foundation for a lot of other nonsense. And then the trick is, uh oh, they're on to what this thing was, and now we gotta obfuscate it with, you know, oh, you're just an idiot. It's not. It's just acknowledging history. Like I, I remember learning all the history. It's I don't acknowledging remember. it. It's stressing certain points no, to get a, a, yes, a it's negative uh, reaction. Uh, uh, corporate DEI training. I think it's called DEI, but it's, and this all ties into ESG ratings. So remember the Occupy Wall Street 
protests. So now I remember like, I don't want to see bongo drums and all that dumb shit, but I was totally into it because they were torturing Wall Street dipshit. I'm like, oh, good. I hope these whatever kids are upsetting them so much that they jump out of their fucking windows. Like it's black, you know, whatever it was, Black Monday. I hope that oh, they get coming. Wall Street. That's coming though. Yeah, well, they're going to have to lose some money. So, but it didn't get anything done. And that's where after that, you'll notice the real insane PC shit started coming out of. And that's by design. See, it's not that they don't care what you think, right? It's not that people on top don't care what you think. They care very much what you think. They're not going to let you know they care. But everything's been done to make sure that a thing like Occupy Wall Street never happens again. So within- it's Interrupted to status quo. We can't have right. that. So- all the riots and the when the politicians are like, oh yeah, defund the police. And I'm sure heads of departments, like high up people in police, like here's your handy pallet of protest bricks, everyone, because it's perfect. You go, well, good, have no police, let them burn shit down. And then guess what we're going to get? A lot more funding. The Capitol riots. Guess what we have? A brand new police force, a secret Amazing, police right? force. So gradually they're going to replace the public police, which is where the poor people, with private police. So there's going to that's be coming, and that's yeah. a, that's a very scary and and very quick quick slope down because once the politicians Brazil, control Brazil. the police instead of influence the police like they do now, then what do you have? You have a literally a Stalin esque like country. They want to replace that with secret police. That's the that's yeah. the gradual thing is to have secret police that you don't even know it. So you don't have these public problems. Well they kind of have it now. They they've politicized the FBI to the point where it's no longer what it's supposed to be. Well the FBI was always like I mean not the indiv- I'm sure I'm sure the individual people it's like agents there's much people doing their job but they're people that take orders. The people at the top of it are always it's like it's not some guy that did investigations some fucking lawyer that got elected because he's a kiss ass so the fbi for years i mean going back to hoover hoover remember he used to say there was no mafia because they had pictures of him in drag that's why he said that they had bla- course, they yeah. him. amazing I, i'm i was gonna say as soon as you said hoover i'm like well that's not a real good leader is it but he's the founder of it so hoover now, did took- he go by they or was that oh no that's not my bad but they is not the same as that they is like a different <laughs> See, that's that's some thing. So everybody, there's always people that are that's queer. That's the dumbest thing. I, I like, you know, I don't care. But what you when, do you ever talk to like old, like old, I mean, old gays that are not dating a young, a young Twinkie that they want to impress? It's just the whole, All, the whole thing. How can you be more than one person? They, what the fuck are you talking about? You're one person. Um, Well, because it's a way to, uh, it's like, so when I was in high school, you would be into like punk or hardcore. So the, and there'd be and you would gain a contest of like how how core you are right like yeah yeah so hard. now so now it's just how queer you are <laughs> like I'm hard queer yeah, but like you're still only one person to go and around not even they. wait dude they're not even how the they. hell are you a they they means more than one you dumbasses I know but th- that's that's just like the semantics of the idea is it's an identity and so you can be queer and not be gay at all. There's all these people that are like, oh, yeah, I'm, in fact, you know, it's whatever act, you actors. are, great, terrific, but just make sure you use the right pronoun. You're one person, but whatever they, you like, want to call dude, yourself. All the all these people like because I see it in like Hollywood stuff a lot. There's all these actors. Oh, I, I actors, can only imagine. But they're they're You'll hear it. They'll be officially like queer, but they've never like sucked a dick or done it like they've never done it. That's a thing to get ahead. So these are just mantles of of. Like if you ever saw American History X, when the guy go Ed Norton goes to jail and he shows his swastika to signal to, you know, he's like ver- opposite of virtue signaling. <laughs> That's what it is. It's so like Latinx. Nobody, my girlfriend's Hispanic. She doesn't want to be called Latinx. Nobody wants it, but they're like, no, that's what you are. Good news, you're still going to be called that. <laughs> um, if if you're a writer or something trying to get into a Hollywood thing now, and you go, oh yes, Lat- you you put Latinx on, and you're indicating. These are little indicators to say, I'm on board with the new. So all you, you that's just you being a boomer. You saying, what are you very well, like, look at your grandpa caught up in word meanings. No, no, I, I, that's, that's the only one I'm against is this lay shit. Anything else. Even if, you, even if you focus on it, the whole idea is to weed you out of society for even focusing on it. You understand? The whole idea yeah, is 
I want to signal that I'm with the new thing. And the new thing is controlled by corporate like kind of elites. And that's how you indicate you're the right sort of person for advancement in society. So you going against they, just so you know, you've, you basically oh boxed uh, yourself. I just singled never... myself out? Oh, well, then I'm no. going to go by they from now on. I don't know what you want out of life, but you're not going to get it with that attitude you have, oh, Ernest. Shit. I'll tell you that. God damn it. Oh, Ernest, damn I got to wrap it up. Are you coming to the show tonight? I am, sir. Oh, nice. All right, cool. I'm at, uh, well, I don't know when this is going to air, but I'm at Uncle Vinny's in Point Pleasant. Um, you don't have nothing to plug, right? You're a retired cop. I would probably keep that under I your hat. I got nothing to plug. Not yet. No. You know, I'm going to write a book about the escalation, though. Yeah, well, I think it's a good, I always wonder why that was a thing, because it seemed like wouldn't wouldn't naturally, so you just surprise you think, and start yelling, it would cause problems. You got to remember something about cops. We are awfully slow learners. Awfully yeah, that's slow why learners. I don't, I mean, other than when or I can tell, you know, you can tell when someone's just using their little power trip on you it, anywhere. But again, this is the, the low end blue collar labor of policing is the cops. At the high end, there's no accountability of any kind. Like, no, I just told you. How can the police department lose $4 million and nobody gets fired? I don't know. You saw training day. I mean, it's up to the $4 million. That's a lot of money to just go, oops, sorry. Oh, well. It's, you know, it is to me, but in the scheme of things, it's like nothing. That's the sad thing. Right. And that's what's sad. That's no one's going to care about a measly $4 million at that level. Like, if you took it, it'd be a big deal. But four million, you know, it's like when Biden was get the the safe crack pipe kit that made the news, and they're like that, and but that's even that program is nothing. thirty million dollars for crack pipes for everybody. Well, not just crack pipes, but I didn't oh, know crack oh. pipes, by the way, were such a. I didn't know they were that expensive. I didn't know that. Well, they won't. I mean, usually, it's made out of a pen, so it's just discarded trash. Well, or you could buy them easily at any smoke shop if you or any head shop. Yeah. Bit. Um, but you know, a lot of people don't have access to that. But I, even that, in it, in and it of itself, like it's like they do clean needles and stuff in places where it kind of works. The problem is here, if you're one city doing that, you've just now created a hobo, a hobo parade to your town. That's what like, ha- that started happening in Philadelphia, and that's why everybody's against the the free use sites that are now popping up what's a free use site oh that's exactly what it is it's somewhere where you can go use your illegal drugs and feel safe i mean as somebody who's way into drugs for many years i would never want to be around other yeah, people at a free use site using drugs like let me tell you who knows that that's not gonna work drug addicts because <laughs> yeah. they know how to watch their back and they know first well, aid. yeah but what happens is the junkies go to those neighborhoods because guess where guess who goes to those neighborhoods the dealers duh yeah right and uh so they're know. trying to put these into the nicer areas in philly and philly is going no we don't want that Dude, I'm I like i don't on, blame you i don't I blame on, you uh, uh oxycontin for like four or five years okay Good and God. uh yeah and so when I stopped, it, it was like uh, I was going to have to switch to heroin because it was better for my cheaper. liver, cheaper and better for you than fucking Oxycontin. Isn't that crazy? Oh well, no, I, was, it, you know, I did a lot. It's believable because I, I actually was that cop that like, especially in Camden, because it's dime, there's just so many. I would actually ask like, hey, where did this start for you? Like, I actually legitimately wanted to know because like, oh, when where, you did start, start? where did it mostly start? A lot of them said it was just like you. It it started as I got hurt, and one thing led to another, and now I'm 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 in the heroin. Well, I didn't get hurt. Uh, I got hurt. I got um initially Percocet. I didn't get some of the strong oxycotton. It's just that oxycotton was available, and it was like you know. It, I mean, I probably will never touch a. I wouldn't even touch like a Vicodin. I, none of that stuff. I, I'll just take IV. I didn't really think about it when I did it, but if I need surgery or something or something down the line. My tolerance for that stuff is probably very high, even now. Yeah, it and, does uh, take a while to reset. And so if I do get hurt, I'm going to just have to muscle it out and not take that stuff because I'm afraid of it. Like, and I, I literally don't want it. Like, it, I remember it very vividly. It was very expensive and um, very, like, it stops working how it should. Pretty, I don't know how they sold it that it's not addictive because, like, any idiot could tell you that an opiate's addictive, like, of course, so, because anything that you get a rise from or makes you feel or forward, you know, like some type of 
good feeling that's addicting but it's that addictive in a way dude yeah. this is a like a fit like cocaine is not you ain't gonna have withdrawals from i mean maybe i don't know i, I don't at all you don't have withdrawals from that opiates you're gonna wish you were dead but xanax the benzos like that'll kill you you could yeah. die from the withdrawals opiate you yep. wish you were dead it ain't listen i you. see them in the emergency room all the time like not on the other side dts yeah. are horrible that's yeah, worse alcohol, you could die. As my doctor was telling me, so alcohol, Absolutely. you could die from withdrawal and benzos. Now I'm getting to see the other side working in a hospital and an ER. I get to see, like, after I drop people off as a cop, I would go back out. But now I'm seeing the other side. And it's much darker, much darker. Yeah, it's wild, man. And, and so uh, if you think about how crazy that is, that, you know, I never used to believe in any kind of like, who was the guy that he died and he was reporting that CIA had brought, they was just that CIA put crack in the community and, and some comedian had a joke, a black comic about like, well, it doesn't mean you have to do it because <laughs> they well, put it there. But that's like one of my favorite did, movies yeah. is boys in the hood. And it was when Trey and his father were talking and they're going through, you know, uh, Compton and there's a liquor store on every corner and Trey's father saying, do you think that was done by mistake? You know, that's systematically that way to keep us drunk and like addicted to drinking. Well, the thing is, you don't see is, a liquor store on every corner in the suburbs. It's in the inner city. The the thing that's crazy that I didn't realize until like, I don't know, not fairly recently, like, you know, like smoking, like how, that's an old joke. Like, how did you not know that was bad for you? Well, they literally were telling people that it's good for you. Like yeah. all these things or like which you like don't realize because you're or i don't realize you're you're living at another end of time where everybody knows all this stuff at the time they weren't saying anything like that no i mean i just saw an ad that it was for camel of all things but it's like from the 40s the ad was more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette you know they'd have a doctor (laughs) the the commercials were a doctor telling you which cigarette to smoke and um but that's every harmful thing i mean if you look into I mean, you shouldn't do your own research. You know what? It's just depressing. That's I, that's the main thing. Because you start show. to realize that, you know, diving down some rabbit holes, you come out a little bit better and a lot no, scared. Never, a I, lot scared. I, I can either uh, stop smoking pot or I can learn new things, but I'm not doing both. Um, all right. <laughs> all right. I'll see you later tonight, brother. Thanks for coming on. And uh, that's no, no problem. Uh, what do I got? Okay. That's it. That's the end. Because I can't get right. I can't get right.